wonderful wonderful it is another monday and it's great to be back with you you are with us on today's woman cop usa radio thank you for always being here with us elder samasa here is away for a brief moment and you know our prayers are with him he he also lost his dad not too long ago and so all of you who are bereaved we want to extend the holy spirit's comfort and solace to all of you i want to use this opportunity to congratulate mr and Mrs. Will be being uh, Auntie Hilda and will be being got married in Church of Pentecost, uh, uh, you know, Dallas. So, congratulations to both of you. And we are praying for open doors for all those who are seeking also to go down the aisle. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something very poignant, something that is part of human life. That's, and, uh, you know, we could say it's preventable. Sometimes we can say it's not preventable. It's something that happens to every human being. We're talking about accidents, not pleasant. Yet we're going to deal with it. We have our wonderful mothers here and they will help us make meaning out of life's accidents. And so call a friend and kindly share a link so that it will be a blessing. As always, I have with me First Lady Henrietta. First Lady Henrietta Kasi is married to Reverend Benjamin Kasi, uh, blessed with three boys. And, you know, Reverend Benjamin Kasi and First Lady Henrietta are the district uh, ministers in charge of Tennessee District Church of Pentecost. Professionally, she's worked in the accounting field and also you know in the kingdom she loves children she loves women empowerment issues she loves youth and festivities first lady Henrietta, always a blessing to have you here god bless you and welcome again thank you i'm so happy to be here may god bless you all amen 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 and we have for the first time uh dignus dr jenna araba akins uh she's a member of church of Pentecost houston district well uh, currently she is the chair of the texas regional covid 19 advisory board she served as district secretary uh, you know in the church uh all the way 2012 to 2017 and professionally she is retired as of january 2021 she's worked as a public health research Researcher, evaluator, program development and implementation at the City of Houston Health Department. She's worked there for 30 years. Also, she's an instructor in human anatomy and physiology at the Science Department at the Houston Community College. And she's uh, very focused on family life. She's a mother, you know, <laughs> balancing all of that with family life. She's the mother of two grown children. Dr. Araba Akins, it's a blessing to have you join us. You're welcome on today woman thank you so very much for this opportunity and i look forward to a vibrant discussion we are glad to have you and you. we have sergeant fanny she's on duty but she just popped in because we are about to talk about yeah. accidents today so yeah yeah she's trying to talk because <laughs> i'm here in the background showing that you know sergeant is on duty so we have sergeant uh mrs fanny uh seshi she's been with oklahoma city department of police for over seven years her background is criminal justice and forensic science so <laughs> mrs fanny says she is a blessing to have you join us on today's woman. Salute to you, Sergeant. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to join you all. Awesome. Awesome. And you know, she is a, a, a tough one. You know, in Oklahoma City, she was the young lady who was always behind the drums. Everybody says, you got to be some kind of a woman to be behind the drums. And yes, she is a police officer. And you know, one time she pulled over our presiding elder and told him, <laughs> go. she didn't give him a ticket, but she told him, go and sin no more. So she is a tough one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that is an interesting twist to it. So we are happy to have you. And we are going to Canada. We have our mommy, Mama Debbie Engman, you know, is in Canada. Canada, Toronto. She's married to Apostle Daniel Engman. He's the area head of the York, not York area in Toronto, Canada. They are former missionaries to Guyana in South America. She is an early childhood educator. Also, Mommy loves herbal stuff. She has a background as a herbalist from the Dominion Herbal College and also into pre horticultural stuff. Biologically, she's a mother of three strong men and also a grandmother. Mama Debbie, it's great to see you again. You're welcome to today's woman. Thank you very much. And as usual, it is a blessing for me to be 
Amen. We are blessed, blessed to have you too. And you know, our mummies are all looking splendid today. We are off to Ghana and we have Mama Doris Otunyako. She's married to Apostle Doris Otunyako. He is in charge of all the global funds of the Church of Penny because he's the fair. <laughs> Mommy said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> they have six, you know, children. She has three men, three young ladies. Also, professionally, our mommy, you know, ha has an MBA from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. She's lectured at KTU, now uh, formerly k -Poly. Three times, she's been a host of the Women on Fire Conference. She's with Arike Anan Temple in Accra. Mumu Doris, it's great to have you here again. God bless you and welcome. Thank you, Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you for having me here. Thank you too. We are blessed always to have you. And to mommy dearest, you know, today mommy is looking very colorful over there. We have Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che. You know, she's been with the Department of Nursing uh, since 2014. She's the faculty nurse, uh, <laughs> faculty midwifery uh, department of nursing and midwifery at the Pentecost University. That's the head over there. On the national arena in Ghana, Dr. Mrs. Abigail Che is the president of the Ghana College of Nurses and midwives. She's been married for over 37 years to Apostle Professor Peter Nietzsche. He's retired an Apostle Minister of the Church of Pentecost and a former rector of the Pentecost University. And mommy and Apostle are blessed with five children and four grandchildren. Mommy dears, you're looking colorful. God bless you and welcome again to today's woman. Thank you very much and hello to everybody. Hello. Awesome. 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 So, you know, it, it's, a, it's, it's very difficult dealing with the topic of accidents. Also, even from the Christian perspective, where you have people ask the question, if we have a good God, why would such a good God allow accidents? You know, and sometimes somebody says, look, I didn't mean to. And I have my little girl here. She's learned that sentence as well. So sometimes when she's trying to get out of trouble, one first thing, mommy, I didn't mean to. And, you know, they kind of use a different tone when they're trying to be apologetic. And I told her, I said, it doesn't cut it. Sorry doesn't solve it. And she's done it to me, too. I did something, and I said, sorry. So, mommy, sorry doesn't stop it. So, you know, <laughs> she paid me back in my own coin. Abigail, you know, I'm just going to start with you. And just from your personal perspective, when you hear the word an accident, even from your relationship as a believer and also professionally, what comes to your mind, please? Thank you for today's topic. And thank you for the question. Accidents accident happen. And when I think of accidents, I look at it, sometimes accidents can lead to something good. But most of the time, we are afraid of accidents because they are not something that you planned for. So when the word accident is mentioned, I'm thinking about something that is unexpected. Mm -hmm. um, it's non-deliberate, not premeditated. Mm -hmm and planned and generally something that drops on you and you're like wow this is something that i was not looking forward to mm. Mm. so uh, it's, it's a kind of surprise a big surprise and it could be pleasant or unpleasant but most of the time when we talk of accidents we are looking at things that are happening to us which have come our way in such a way that because we were not expecting it, it has thrown us off gear. Mm. And therefore, we now have to sit up and do something about it. When it comes to my profession, for instance, um, a nurse can accidentally give the wrong medication to somebody. Mm. When mm. you are supposed to check that this is the medication that is going to patient A or B. And for whatever reason, sometimes you mix it up. And then you realize, I remember when I was a student nurse, I gave medication. And after I had left the, the hospital and I was out on the way going, it came to my mind. Did I give this dosage or did I give that dosage? And I was far away from the, um, the hospital. 
I couldn't go back. Believe you, I couldn't sleep that night. I hear I was sitting. Did I give an overdose or an underdose? I thought I gave this yeah, much. And I was really worried. So the next morning, I was on duty. The bed of that patient was the first one I went to. And when I went, the person was breathing. He was asleep, but he was breathing. So that alone put me at rest. And then I at what I wrote down. Mm-hmm. And I realized that I gave the correct dosage. Mm-hmm. But you see, I could have, if I had made that mistake, I would have had accidentally done it. Mm-hmm. And the positive consequences could have been dire. So mm-hmm. accidents are not things that we normally look forward to. But then we have Romans 8.28 in the Bible that says that all things work together for good for them who love God, who mm-hmm. are called according to it. So when that comes to mind with us Christians, yes, accidents may happen, but God can turn it around and let something good come out of it. Amen, amen. God bless you so much. Mama Debbie, I'm just going to come straight to you. Even from what Mama Abigail said, she said, look, accidents can happen, sharing her own personal experience with us, but God can make it work together for our good. If you can also weigh in from your perspective about accidents, please. Yeah, thank you very much, Mama Abigail. Yeah, accidents, normally I would say they are unexpected. Mm-hmm. Uh, things you, you don't look forward to and uh, Ma, because said, yeah, there, there are times accidents are good. Like maybe you are meeting your f- future husband, you bump into him by accident somewhere. <laughs> somebody said, me cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so something like that. But then most of the time, accidents are things that could bring injury, could mm-hmm. bring pain, mm-hmm. it could bring suffering. And like you said, most of the time, it is unintentional. Mm. Uh, but then there are a few times where maybe the person may have been a little careless, pushed themselves so far. Ma, Ma Abigail gave a testimony. I'll, I'll give mine. Um, uh, I was supposed to, I said, I, I had some problems with uh, my pregnancies. So the second one, uh, at that time, we had just been called into the ministry and then Apostle was in Montreal. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then I felt that the baby was coming. So where I, I got somebody to take me to the hospital and not knowing the rule was that the doctor was not, was not supposed to do more than three cesareans. Okay. But I, I was the fourth. Mm. And then he made a mistake. The towel, he sewed it inside me. Oh my goodness. So I was laying there and I was bleeding to death. And I felt the thing. I felt something warm mm. in my stomach. Boom. Then it stops me. and I didn't say anything because I had a nurse with me at that time because the BP was, I, I had that issue. So then they, they knew me in the hospital because I had stayed there for six weeks. Mm. So when they said, hi, Deb, we've come to check on the incision, see how everything is. They lifted up the bed sheet. Woo. Then every, some people just ran out of the room. Mm. Mm. Then I asked them, what is happening? They said there was a mistake made. And my own gynecologist was livid. He told my husband, sue the hospital and sue the doctor. Mm. And then my husband said, no. So long as me and the baby are okay. You know, uh, uh, but it was a horrendous, it was a horrendous mistake because what what it created was that I started swelling up. They couldn't Mm. bring the swelling and the repercussions and all that were so many. Mm. So so sometimes I would say the accidents, why did he push himself to do a fourth? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know so uh, sometimes there are people who will say i'm tired and i know i have to sleep but let me drive mm. or, or you know or, or uh, the, the the stove is on the fire the, uh, the this thing and i have a baby behind my back so sometimes it's it's better to actually tie the baby in because babies they will stretch from their hand immediately when they mm-hmm. see Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there are some accidents. It's unintentional. It's unfortunate. Sometimes we miss our step and something will happen. But there are some too that if we had been a little bit more vigilant, mm. then we could have saved, you know, a situation. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much because you brought in. I'm tired. Let me drive. Um, Mrs. Fanny says she's sergeant. Let me come to you. Uh, 
Uh, mommy was saying, look, accidents happen. If you could talk to us about, you know, accidents from your perspective, um, vehicular, vehicular, you know, accidents and stuff like that. Mommy said, look, I'm tired. Let me drive from what you've seen on the road. If you can weigh in, uh, she said some are preventable. Some are not preventable. What is your perspective? Um, from my perspective, accident always, I mean, ends up in injury. Hmm. Uh, they are positive ones, but from where I'm coming from, accidents always end up in something bad happening. Mm. Uh, for instance, if um, and we have two types of accidents. Okay. Something unfortunate. It's unplanned. And um, when let's say you want to get on the road and drive, we that we have the preventable ones that is speeding. A lot of people just um, they see the speed limits as just an opinion. Instead of it's being uh, the law for them to obey, <laughs> they add their own, you know, speed limits. They say thirty, they see thirty, and they decide to add ten mm. because they want to get to wherever they're going instead of leaving the house on time. Mm -hmm. And those are preventable things that you can actually do. You can drive the speed limits; they are there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So when you go the speed limit, the reason is if something happens, you have enough time to react. That's mm. why the speed limits are there for. Okay. And another preventable one is staying on your phone. We are told numbers without time. There is no way the brain, the way the brain functions, it's impossible for you to do two things at the same time effectively. Okay. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So if you're on the phone and you're driving, your reaction time is reduced by 50%. So oh, wow. car stops right in front of you and you're on your phone. If I'm not on the phone, I can hit the brakes quickly, quick enough. But if you're on the phone, it's going to take you about a second and a half to react because okay. your brain is telling you one thing. And in reality, what is happening is also different. Mm -hmm. So that is a preventable, I mean, a pre something you can prevent. Okay. And driving while you're tired, if you are, don't. Just mm -hmm. park somewhere and sleep. And um, driving while you take medication. If you take pain pills, narcotics please and it's you know you don't have to take those medication and sometimes they write it on the bottles don't drive or you know control um machinery and i think that's i don't know the, the exact wording mm -hmm. but they write that on the prescription bottles again it's it's some people take it as an opinion mm -hmm. and then they will take it and think you know what i'm tough i can do this and usually it's not about you but it's about the other person on the street mm. you may be tough but when it happens you can control the car but what about the next person mm. so that is something we can prevent and there are also unpreventable accidents that is due to the weather that okay. is something we cannot control mm -hmm. when we have bad weather winter or when it rains or when we have a storm that there's mm -hmm. nothing you can do about that mm -hmm. and with that the only way we can, what we can do is to prepare Okay. And the best way to do that is if it's snowing, if there is storm, make sure that you don't drive too close to the car in front of you. Okay. By doing that, it will give you enough time to react. Should mm. something happen to the car in front of you, you have enough room to even turn around. Okay. Instead of driving bumper to bumper or just right behind the car, give yourself about two to three car lengths, especially mm. if there is snow on the ground or ice on the ground. Mm. And if there is storm and you can help it, just park on their shed or an awning. Don't drive through the storm because mm -hmm. when you're speeding and there is storm, it makes your car feels lighter and it mm -hmm. can actually, you know, pick it up if you are moving. But if you are stopped, at least the weight will help you, will help the car stand still should any storm, you know, come your way. So um, that's the little I'll add to, to that. Very, very great information. Thank you so much, Sergeant. God bless you so much. More, Doris. God bless you. You know, our, our mothers have spoken, giving us different dimensions, if you can weigh in as well. Okay, so thank you so much, madam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my daughter, my last one, she used to call them a police. So a police woman. <laughs> So as she rightly said, accident is anything that is not planned for, but it happens. Mm -hmm. And it is not intentional, it's not deliberate, but it, it can happen to anybody. And I want to say that accident can happen to anybody, irrespective mm -hmm. of the fact that maybe you are doing the good thing and the other person is not doing the good thing. As mm -hmm. Madame rightly said, the person may be sleeping instead of parking to have a nap, 
the person wants to sleep, you will be on your right uh, lane, but the person can drive into your car. And that is an accident. It's an unfortunate situation. So I want to take it from the domestic aspect of accident. Okay. Where, yeah, we place our, our, I remember when I was teaching life skills, one of the questions that we used to ask was um, causes of accidents in the kitchen. Mm. And one of the things that we wanted the students to bring out is the positioning of our suspects. Mm. Okay. I should have brought a suspect to demonstrate. You know, the suspense, when you have a suspense that has that uh, tool, you can hold like this. Mm -hmm. We always want you to put it this way, where you can pass and your body will not touch it. Don't turn it this way, that when you are passing and the soup is on the fire, you may use your hand or anybody or a, a large, a small child can bring it down. Mm -hmm. It's one of major causes of accidents in the in the homes. Okay. And spill, yeah, spilling of water. As you go around now, you know, most of our homes we have towels. Mm -hmm. So if somebody spills water and we don't deal with it quickly, somebody may slip. And that can be a very bad accident. People even die out of it. I remember a, a lady, a friend of mine lost their knees because of this thing. She, she there was water and she was pregnant, you mm. know, and the, the, she, she, she slipped. And when she got up, instead of going to the hospital, mm -hmm. she, she did it. Oh. And, and I think I said, that I hear the placenta got detached or some, some complications. Mm. And both the baby and the mother died. This is an accident that mostly it happens to women. We are so much in a hurry that when the waters are there, we don't take notice of them and then we just walk through them. It can cause a lot of accidents. If you don't die, you can break your bone, you can break your hip. So please, women, we should take that into consideration. Then another thing that I want to talk about is this technology called telephones. We use telephones whilst we are in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I know that Madame will arrest all of us here. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> she give us tickets because we all do it. <laughs> but I you, it's one of the most dangerous things that is happening now. Mm. We shouldn't be in the kitchen with our telephones. It's, it, it can ignite fire and you'll be killed. Mm. So it's another accident that is going on that we should talk about all women we put our phone, oh, but they are two speaker. I'm an Ekasa. You are only a two speaker. You can die out of that. Mm. Then the last thing that I want to talk about is we don't have time to charge our phones. So while the phone is charging and a friend has called you, the phone will be in the socket. And you as you 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 receive the call and you'll be talking. I hear it is no good. I've read about it. I'm not a technical person, but I've watched for and other things, and I know that it's a dangerous thing that we have to discourage in all homes. So as women, and as today, I've asked so many women to come on board because this is a very important thing that we need to educate our children. Yes, that's the source. Oh, it will be a good teacher, a good teacher. So that is the best way to okay. put the saucepan uh -huh. on the gas cooker. That's Don't right. turn it so turn it for me. When you turn it like this, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you are passing, you can use your hand or something to push the soup okay. and this, it will spill on you. Mm -hmm. So we always advise that we should put it this way. Okay. It is very safe to put it this way because mm -hmm. this way nobody will go there and this way to nobody will go there. So we don't put our suspense this way. We okay. put them this way. way. So All when right. you do that, I know that God is with us. He mm -hmm. has given us wisdom. He is preventing us, but we should the little things that we need to do for ourselves we should do it so that the protection of God will be hundred percent for us. God bless us all. Amen. Amen. Very, very educational. God bless you so much and practical. We appreciate you. Dr. Araba Akins, if you can weigh in as well. Momo Doris went to us to the domestic perspective, talking to us about practical accidents. What are some of the life events? That can also be an accident because, you know, from what our mothers were saying, an accident is something that is not planned for. So, you know, we, somebody said, I, I broke your heart, but I didn't mean to. You know, life events that happen. Is that also an accident? 
Mommy, please, y'all on mute. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's a good question. Now, listening to everyone so far, I want to give a disclaimer. One, to me, an accident is any adverse event, okay. therefore has adverse outcomes. Mm -hmm. Now, if I bump into a young guy and I fall in love, unplanned, to me, is an opportunity. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. let's do that. Uh -huh. So now here I am, the young guy breaks my heart. Oh. That wasn't planned. I didn't go in to be to have my heart broken. Mm -hmm. And we talk of these things like they are light. Mm -hmm. But it can go on to where you're married, six months, beautiful, mm. five months, mm. wonderful, kids are in. You feel as a woman fulfilled. Mm. All you think of is, I'm going to, the separation will be death. Do mm -hmm. us part. Mm. I don't know of any woman who planned to be divorced. Hmm. I have never, honestly, I've never met a woman, but I don't ask men a whole lot of questions either. <laughs> but I do ask women. Uh -huh. None of us. By the time you are 20, 21, you are beginning to buy your pots, the baby clothes. I did that. Hmm. So, <laughs> I planned for a long relationship. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my experience. So mm. I, I think the life events in the home should be classified or looked at mm -hmm. as accidents as well. Mm -hmm. So that as Christian men and women, we can respond appropriately. Mm -hmm. Because when somebody's heart is broken, the best response we know to do is to blame. Hmm. We sit back, we stand up, we point fingers. We want to know who was wrong hmm. as if we could do something about it. Hmm. After all, it's not your heart that was broken. <laughs> you probably don't even know what a broken heart looks like. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. But I said an accident has adverse effect and so you can imagine the kinds of adverse implications a marriage that is broken has hmm. not just on the person not even only on the kids mm -hmm. but families mm. what is the church doing about it that would be my contribution that we begin to see divorce as an accident mm. that can happen in the family. If your child is married, your brother is married, you are married, you know the planning that got into it. You had a, a, an expected end in mind. And if that doesn't happen, you didn't plan it. That's our definition. You mm. didn't plan it. You didn't expect it. It's unfortunate. We say it's an adverse event event mm. which is equal to an accident in the home in relationships mm. god bless you so much very very you know deep is it, it, is is this just uh poignant no it is it's how I'm, I'm seeing it so first thing Henrietta, if you can react thank you so much dr arakens uh uh first thing here if you can respond to that you know she said look you no know, we had this fairy tale wedding this great promise till death. And then this has happened. She said that it's an accident because we are saying an accident is unplanned. And here I am, this has happened to me. And what, what was the sad note for me was, the first question is, what did you do? You know, uh, sometimes it's like, do, do you cook for him? Do you, do you dress up? You know, those things, uh, we will we'll table it down and look at it very well because I am here, but you just, you know, you sh you're shaking some tables right here and I'm just, you know, having so much to follow up on, but I'm tabling it down because I want to hear everybody's perspective. And then we start to, to deep talking. So first thing, Harrietta, please go for it. 
Yes, I believe in life. Um, when we have a, a beginning of something, we have an expected end, but mm. we also have to realize that there's work that goes into play from the mm. beginning to mm. the end. And so um, when it comes to plan, we, we as humans can plan so much mm -hmm. um, and we can do so much as far as what we do, but it, it also requires us to also um, do certain things that would help to accomplish that end. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, when our sergeant was talking about even when it comes to accidents and we can even bring it to practical life, there are certain things that we can do for ourselves that can prevent certain adverse effects or adverse conclusions. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important for us as individuals to be ahead of our steps, be ahead of what is currently there. Think 10 steps ahead. Don't always think only in the moment, but think afar mm -hmm. and do things and walk in a way and live a life to accomplish that ultimate end. Mm -hmm. In life, we all experience accidents. Yeah. Um, some accidents, like our mothers have said, are accidents that are fruitful. For example, there may be a woman who is well into her prime. She's probably felt like, oh, I've had my last child. I'm 50 years old. And then all of a sudden she goes to the doctor and she's feeling some way and she's pregnant. Okay. That was an unintentional pregnancy, but it's a blessing, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's a blessing. I mean, like, like, I'm at the door. She's had her six baby. She'll go and then it'll be never seven. They might cry a little bit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they might cry a little bit. <laughs> so that is an unintended accident, an unintended pregnancy, for example, could be an accident, but it's a blessing. You never know the reason why God has brought that before you. And for the most part, when we talk about accident, it's always for me, most of the time, it's negative. Mm -hmm. um, it's nothing that leads to something that you would, you know, be excited about or be joyful about. Mm -hmm. um, and then some accidents, for example, are not faults of your own. Mm -hmm. um, you can be sitting there in traffic at a stoplight mm -hmm. and somebody from nowhere can come and just hit you in the back of your car. Yeah, You did everything you needed to do. You stopped, you're looking, you're paying attention, but someone from the back. So, mm -hmm. you know, certain things are not something that you can control. So for me, accidents happen in different areas of our lives. Um, but at the same time, as, as individuals, we have to understand that we can plan to an extent. Mm -hmm. We can plan our lives to an extent. We can we're very hopeful of what we want. But the steps in which we go through, the chapters in which we have to go through to get to that ultimate end, it depends on God. And so... As believers and as individuals, we shouldn't be naive to the fact that accidents do happen. Mm -hmm. But the question we all have to ask ourselves is, what do we do? Mm -hmm. How do we react to those accidents? Mm -hmm. How do we cause change? And how do we move forward from that? Do we live in that accident? Do we allow it to take hold of us? Mm -hmm. Are we just going to be stagnant in that situation? And mm -hmm. in every situation, there's a way forward. That's but right. we have to understand that we there is a way forward and we have to make the necessary steps to move forward. Mm. Very, very great perspectives to look at, and we'll definitely get deeper into that. Uh, we have also uh, Mrs. Grace Saki Ansa. She's a lawyer. She joined us. She's married to Alva Chris Ansa. He's the Church of Pentecost USA, you know, our attorney for the church. And she also works with Windows Max Law Firm. She is a mother. And she's admitted to practice in both Ghana and uh, New York State. And, uh, you know, she has a beautiful daughter. So, very shortly she's going to join us and also she can weigh in also on the legal you know perspective from a lawyer's viewpoint but thank you so much Momo. abigail i'm just about to come to you because of the dimensions of questions that first lady Henrietta was bringing to that and that pregnancy is humanity an accident you know um recently i i, I was reading some quotes that people have uh, said and uh, they were talking about accidents and Christians and, you know, the Big Bang Theory, Darwinism and, and stuff like that. And I wanted to read something that uh, was very interesting to me. So Julian Huxley was the one who was talking, he said, we are as much a product of blind forces as is the falling of a stone to earth or the ebb and flow of the tides. We have just happened and man was made flesh by a long series of singularly beneficial accidents. So this is his perspective. And I'm looking at C.S. Lewis. He also says something. And then maybe I'll, I'll ask you from 
where First Lady Henrietta ended. Human life. Is it an accident? So C.S. Lewis says, if the solar system was brought about by an accidental collusion, then the appearance of organic life on this planet was also an accident. And the whole evolution of man was an accident too. If so, then all our present thoughts are mere accidents, <laughs> the accidental byproduct of the movement of atoms. I see no reason for believing that one accident should be able to give me a correct account of all other accidents. Oh, I, I, I think it's very brilliant and interesting how th th this is contrasting what Julian actually said. So, first thing I mean, I said it, I'm not aware. All of a sudden, I go to the hospital and accidental pregnancy. It's human life in general, an accident. A very good question that you have raised. I, you see, when you say something is an accident, you can plan for unexpected, non medicated, as we have all said, generally I'm fine. But it, it will, it baffles me mm. that an accident can repeat itself so many times <laughs> that with the billions of people on earth, mm. we all accidentally have the same system. Mm. My anatomy and physiology tells me that my brain weighs a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It tells me that my skeletal system is like this. Mm -hmm. It tells me that my heart is in a particular position. Okay. And when I go and look at the next person, the th that person also has the same thing. I bring about 10 people together and they all have it. What kind of accident is that? Mm. 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 What, what kind of accident can keep repeating itself so well that in a knowledge of an understanding of anatomy and physiology of the human being, we see the same thing being repeated in not not one person, not two persons, but in millions and billions yes. and trillions of people. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me that an accident can repeat itself so perfectly well that the surgeon can go to the hospital and say that, I know that from the scan, this is where the problem is. This is where the tumor is. And I can go directly into the system of the person and take it out from that particular place. What mm -hmm. kind of accident is that? Mm -hmm. You see, so these are some of the things that I question. When people bring up, I mean, when you sit down, you think about these things. And then I take my Bible and the, my Bible tells me that I am fearfully and wonderfully oh, made. Wonderful, I, mean. mm -hmm. I take my Bible and my Bible tells me in Jeremiah that before I became, I was even a clot in my mother's womb, God knew my future yes. personally personally telling my own story my mother told me that there was a prophecy about my birth okay but you see what fascinated me about when she told me was that she said before she gave birth to me she had a dream okay and, in, and the prophecy that came to said that i was going to be a girl i'm a, the third girl of my mother's children okay and the, the prophecy told her that I was going to be a girl, mm -hmm. my mouth, but my nose would be flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the prophet okay. told her, I mean, they said it. So I don't know whether I've told the story about my nose and how I went through the gymnastics of getting my nose pointed because everybody was laughing at my nose. Then when my mother told her, oh, why didn't you tell me earlier? Mm -hmm. I already mm -hmm. said that my nose was going to be flat. And look at what people have been saying and have been following their story. <laughs> even more interesting mm. she said before she gave birth to me, she dreamt that she had given birth to a baby girl okay. like the prophecy mm. told her mm. it's not mm. this uh, 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 a prophecy that came when she was praying with some people okay mm. but she dreamt 
and she had given birth. Mm. And when she was going to give birth, from when she woke up, she knew she would give birth on a Sunday because in the dream, she saw women in their cloth and their hair tie holding symbols as we do in the Church of Pentecost in those days. Mm -hmm. We were going to church. He okay. told her it was a Sunday. And then what is even more important is that he said that he saw the clock on the wall mm. and the pointer was five minutes to one o'clock. Okay. Whether it was day or night, she didn't. The day she gave birth to me was a Sunday. Mm. The moment she heard the nah, she looked up on the clock and it was five to one. My goodness. Uh, right are you right. telling me that I'm an accident? No. I can't be an accident. Mm. This happened before I was born. Mm. Mm. So if everybody else is an accident, that's for me, I'm not. <laughs> Very and interesting. I'm sure, and I'm sure we can go back into so many things that fell as that. And you see, accidents are unplanned. Okay, good. So the, uh, all the millions and trillions and people of on the earth we were accidents let's see let's say we were really accidents okay then we are we are all following the same pattern because mm -hmm. the normal thing is what we use in the hospital to find out what is wrong with somebody mm -hmm. so we know that normally a person behaves in this way mm -hmm. if the person behaves from it the person is going to back somewhere or if a person's body is behaving in a particular way, maybe this has happened. Okay. So when we take this out, we take this one, we put this one back, and then we realize that there is an abnormality. Mm -hmm. okay. So, but most of the normal things are go this way. Mm -hmm. But I read once that somebody had a heart problem. Okay. Right? And so in those days, it wasn't in the days of scans and things like that. So the doctors, they, everything, every symptom was showing that it was a heart problem. So they needed to have a heart set. They had opened up the person. The heart was not in the left side where it is with everybody. Yeah. So oh. The doctors, the surgeons were around the table and they were like, what is happening? This person is breathing, he's walking about. Nobody can go around without a heart. Mm -hmm. So where is the heart? So one of the surgeons looked on and said, you know something, just as there are left-handed people, mm -hmm. when most people are normally right-handed, that's right. you can see that this person's heart is on the right side more than on the left side. Mm -hmm. They turn to the other side and lo and behold, the heart was on the right side. Mm -hmm. Now, what, do, I mean, I don't know whether I'm making myself clear, but how, what kind of accident is this? Mm -hmm. how, do, how does God or whoever, I mean, those who don't believe in God and think life is an accident, how does that force prepare people in a particular way and then let some people deviate from the normal mm -hmm. and let them mm -hmm. be different? It can't be an accident. Mm -hmm. There is something behind it. There is a force behind it. That force is God who has intricately woven us and made us different from each other. So that thing about um, um, what people being an accident, the Big Bang Theory and all those things, I find it more difficult to believe than what the, uh, the evidence that I have in front of me that tells me that God is behind the scenes and he has created us in his own image. Mm -hmm. And we have been on this planet for some time. I am, mm -hmm. have been here for more than two years. I still haven't seen a bank creating a human being. <laughs> <laughs> so when, is it, when is it going to start? <laughs> Those who have lived before me, mm -hmm. my, I mean, the very, very old people who are in their hundreds, mm -hmm. none of them ever saw a bank creating a human being. Mm -hmm. What are you telling me? <laughs> we are not All right. Thank you so much. Very interesting. I want to acknowledge our people and Dr. Herbert AK. So I'm going to come to you because, Mommy, you know, I want to say, look, okay, Mommy says she's never seen the bank, but if we have moved from one end to this end, 
I expect by now we should change to the next level. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That 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 is a good point and observation. Yeah. Um, the evolution theory propounds on natural selection, survival of the fittest, and adaptation. Mm -hmm. So as some of us, more than three, three scores plus 10, some of us within four, two scores and three scores, I don't know whether you've seen transitions. Mm -mm. Have you seen somebody with a third eye? <laughs> Have you seen somebody with one ear? Uh, we talk of climate change. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't there be some transitions mm -hmm. in the evolution theory mm -hmm. to substantiate that we are all here by chance? Mm -hmm. The word chance in statistics is probability, mm -hmm. changes that come out of the fluke, yeah. you know? Uh, and I would expect that if Houston snow is happening in Houston, mm -hmm. then uh, some things should be changing. If yeah. African-Americans have been here for 200 years plus, they should be fairer than, uh, but I meet people who are <laughs> darker than me. Mm -hmm. I meet yeah. people who look like my aunties, my uncles, and I almost certainly know somebody was taken from my tribe in mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. and, it is only God who can be precise. Mm. 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 Why exactly. is the water molecule H2O? Oh, that's right. And nothing else. Why? Mm -hmm. When oxygen is being, uh, now we know that there's less in the atmosphere because of ozone. Mm. Shouldn't it be more hydrogen peroxide than water molecules? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, very, you know, after after teaching for 26 years in the biological sciences, in fact, after my fifth year, I refused to take a course to teach in evolution mm. because it was a conflict of interest to me. Mm. I couldn't teach it. Mm. I couldn't give examples. I couldn't take people to the museum for anything like that. Mm. Mm. Like my mom, may she rest in peace, will say, Araba, I'm not a descendant of a monkey. And so you are not either. And I bought that as a little girl, that I'm not from a monkey. And so uh, to me, it's God's design. Hmm. Even the scientists who are talking about this, that simple atoms that come together to give us molecules, where are they from? Hmm. Mm -hmm. why, why is the gold atom different from the hydrogen atom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good questions to ask, yeah. So it's a waste of time playing with words and money. Mm. Mm. Right now, the evolution basis is breaking mm -hmm. because we have strong scientists who are strong Christians. Mm -hmm. We don't tell our stories enough. Mm. And that is the problem. We don't. But no way is a human being or any living thing, the leaf, the root. If water molecule is precise mm. from the day it was ordered, I see that in the living things as well, that there's a plan, a strategy, there's a reason for why it is made. To, when there is a deviation from it, it stands out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and it doesn't repeat itself yes, just right. randomly. It does not. Hmm. So we have a creator. His name is God, yeah. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We give Amen. thanks to that. Yes. Amen. God bless you so much. You are with us on today's Women COP USA Radio. We are talking about accidents, looking at it from several perspectives. And thank you so much, Mara. We go talk. Thank you so much, Auntie uh, Herbert Akins. Uh, I'm going to acknowledge our people, and I would have you know the views expressed by us, our own personal views, in no way, shape, or form would that be the collective view of the Church of Pentecost. I have Auntie Francisca Ampo for she's here with us. Thank you for always being here with us. She says wonderful and wonderful. Ladies and elder seven saying here, great to listen to you all. 
all. Thank you for being here with us. Auntie Helen Bruni is here. Thank you. She says, praise the Lord, our fabulous first ladies. Praise God to you. We appreciate you for always being here and sharing for us. And Tidori says, I like today's topic. Yes, we do. God bless you so much. And Auntie Benedicta Rukmane J says, she says, praise the Lord, wonderful women of God. Praise God to you. She says, today's topic is going to be jet. <laughs> 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 thank you we are loving the topic so far auntie maria mayo is here praise god everyone praise god to you too and auntie francis Campo, she says oh my god mama debbie we thank god for saving you that was very scary that episode and it shows yeah. that our god is the god of miracles amen amen and then auntie nana i miss her thank you mama thank you too uh, whether it's a sir, or, yeah, I think it must be a sir. Thank you, sir. And Dignas Golda Alma, she says, Vigilance, God bless you for being here and always sharing for us. And Auntie Mary Chase, Sarah, she says, Greetings to all our mothers and God bless you all. God bless you too. And Auntie Nanako, she also for she says, Hello, wonderful TW family. Hello to you too. My dearest, dearest husband is here. Salute, salute to him. He says, Oh, Sergeant, speed limit is not an opinion. We hear you, pa. <laughs> <laughs> and Auntie Nana was here. She says, "Right, park and take a nap when you are tired." God bless you. God bless you. And Dignas Golda says, "Sergeant is on point." God bless you, ma'am. We salute. Salute to you, Sergeant. And Mundari says, "Very good information, madam." God bless you. And uh, Auntie Benedicta, very great information, Sergeant. Thank you, Sergeant. So, Sergeant. <laughs> Salute to you. Dignas Doreen Crab, she's from Oklahoma City. She's a district women's ministry and also in the uh, Texas Regional Executive. God bless you for being here. Auntie Sandra Wusso of Hawaii, God bless you for being here. She says, Good day. Our beautiful first ladies, great topic. Thank you too. Auntie Grace Sajiman. We salute you. You're always here. You're always sharing for us. We appreciate you. She says, watching with friends. Thank you. Thank you. Auntie Amelia Basso, PL of East New York. Uh, we are sorry for your bereavement. She uh, has lost her parents. And so she says, God bless you. God bless you for being here. And Auntie Nanako, she's a she right, Mama Doris. God is always in to protect us, but we've got to do the human common sense part two. Thank you, thank you. And Auntie Francisca, God bless you, bless you, our beautiful first lady. God bless you too. And Dignes Doreen Crow, she said, God bless you, woman of God. God bless you too. Auntie Monica Wusu, you're always here with us. We appreciate you. She says, praise God. Auntie Linda Yadam, praise the Lord, wonderful woman of God. We bless God for your lives. Amen. We bless God for you too. And first lady Henrietta, Auntie Danako, she also for much telling you the accidental babies in court are pension babies. <laughs> Mm. Auntie Golda, um, uh, she says, unintended pregnancy. Can I get a witness? It sure is a blessing. My pension baby, Kayla, brings us so much joy. <laughs> so you have so many witnesses here. Mama Doris is not saying anything already. <laughs> oh, awesome baby. Please, I thank you. <laughs> 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 and Auntie Golda says, Proverbs 69, a man's heart plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. Amen, amen. Exactly. And Dignity Golda says, wow, Mama Debbie, word. And also my cousin, uh, Leticia, Yafo, Talata, she says, God bless you, God bless you for being here and love to the family. Uh, we have also Dignity Golda, she says, powerful. My dearest husband said, hmm, first lady Henrietta, that pregnancy accident baffles me, pa. I look at it from the perspective of the results of our actions. <laughs> you know, it reminded me of uh, an emergency that, you know, we, we, Pastor and myself, we had to respond to an emergency. We thought it was an emergency. And when we went, the person took about 30 minutes just crying, crying. And we allowed her to cry and her accident was she was pregnant. <laughs> so at that point... <laughs> I didn't, the emergency was an unplanned pregnancy, so I do remember that episode, and I didn't know what to say to that at that point. <laughs> and this is when Nicta Brookman J, she says, was pregnant with my baby last without knowing it 12 weeks when my OB joint told me when I went for my normal routine checkup. Interesting testimonies. Auntie Abina Isibia is here with us. Thank you for being here. She says, great topical, my woman of God. Thumbs up and more grace. We will acknowledge more people as we go. But um, Lawyer Grace, 
um, we're going to come to you. Um, our mothers have talked to us so much about you know, what accident is, what accident isn't. And from your legal perspective, if you want to weigh in also, and what should we do if an accident occurs? Uh, Lawyer Grace, please. All right, uh, so for me, uh, thank you for the opportunity and greetings to all our viewers. Um, just like everybody has already said, uh, the, uh, intelligent women we have, have already indicated an accident from a legal perspective uh, is basically an unexpected event. Mm -hmm. it's, an, it's, it's an occurrence that it's unexpected. Mm -hmm. And that means that it occurs without an intent on the part of um, whoever is, is, is causing it. And from, uh, you know, for, from the standpoint of the law, it's very important that it occasions harm to a third party. Uh, that's where you can find redress, you know, and in law harm can be in the form of um, emotional harm, physical injury, mm. uh, you know, financial, it could be psychological. Okay. All of uh, such harm is, is, is considered in law. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, You're we, fine. We, yeah. <laughs> you can't even bring her with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have we have so many many branches of the law that actually addresses situations that we may consider as accidents. Mm. You know, that is things that we may not have planned mm. or things that are unexpected that could occur. So we have areas of law that do with um, one major area of law is negligence okay. that is where the law places a, a responsibility mm. on each of us everyone mm. we call it the duty of care so okay. everybody has a standard duty of care to uh, the next person which in law is called the neighbor your neighbor okay. it uses the the analogy of the good samaritan Mm. that you i mean you may not know somebody but you still owe them a certain level of care so if you're driving on the road uh, regardless of uh, how you need to how quickly you need to get to somewhere you should be cognizant of the fact that there are other road users in that instance you owe all the other road users a standard or a duty of care mm. if uh, I'm, I'm purchasing food from a mcdonald's or wendy's Mm. You know, those who are making the food, you're making it for people's consumption. Okay. So it, it should be in your mind while you're making food that you have a certain level of care to those mm. who are coming to buy the food. Mm. So if I come by the food and uh, there's some something happens to me, uh, maybe, you know, the, something wasn't prepared well and it causes tummy upset and I have to mm. go to the hospital and have uh, pay hospital bills and things like that. I, I have a, a recovery in law because you are deemed to have breached that certain level of care mm. that you owe me. So, I mean, the law has several of, of, of such uh, responsibilities that is placed on almost everybody, depending on the circumstances. Okay. If you're an owner of a house, you owe a duty to those who come around okay. your, your home, those you invite into your home, those who come around to sell. If somebody mm. comes in and they, they trip on something that is a hazard in your house and they fall, they have a, they can have a claim against you depending on, on the fact. And then okay. also, of course, we have um, accidents that, that can occur in the realm of, of criminal law. Okay. For instance, we can have, permit me to use uh, the example of murder. Somebody mm -hmm. can murder somebody else out of uh, volition or mm -hmm. voluntarily actually take a, a gun and, and murder and shoot at somebody. Mm -hmm. But it can also occur as a result of an accident. Mm -hmm. You know, it could do it could be due to uh, somebody's negligence that occasions harm mm -hmm. to a second person that would also uh, result in an assault or a murder or something of the sort. Then we can have uh, uh, accidents in, in, in the form of uh, medical practice. Okay. Uh, you know, when doctors you know, 
yeah, they, they make a mistake of some sort and occasion harm to the patients and all of that. So I think I'm, I'm talking too much, but the, the basic idea is that in all circumstances of life, uh, the law recognizes that certain things are unexpected. Mm -hmm. If I go to eat at a McDonald's, I'm, on, I'm not expecting to come home with uh, food poisoning, for example. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the law takes care of some of, some of these uh, circumstances and provides a means of redress for people who will be uh, aggrieved. But at the same time, uh, I mean, from the standpoint of the law, you realize that we have provisions Okay. or standards that mm. if you comply with All right. then you will be deemed not to have breached that standard of care or that duty of care that you owe to the third person mm. so i mean in law i could say that almost all accidents are preventable it's just oh. a matter of complying with the regulations if it's a speed limit if you follow the speed limit or if you, it's, it's somebody who gets injured in your premises, we have rules and standards that are applicable as to whether you have notified people that there's this hazard in your house, mm. have you taken certain steps? So yeah, if you follow certain steps, even if, we're, even if there is an injury, uh, the law will still cover you because you have you know, taken the steps to, pre to prevent the resulting injury. But then okay. also there, there, there are accidents that are not preventable. I mean, you cannot okay. deny that. So that'll be in the instant that, that'll be covered by uh, the law of estates, for instance, when okay. somebody dies unexpectedly and, uh, you know, things like that. So the law makes provision for people. I mean, you, that, in that in that instance, it's, it's about planning, okay. all right, planning yeah. for the unexpected. So you can have a healthcare proxy to take mm -hmm. care to to provide for instances if you should um, if you should fall sick all okay. of a sudden and and to have you know the care that you want mm. you would have to have had in place a healthcare proxy ahead of time so that okay. is more like you envisioning something that could happen mm. and then making provision for it now mm. you know mm. same goes for wills and uh, drafting powers of attorneys and things okay. like that so okay. um, i mean in a nutshell i would say the law does recognize uh, some of the events that we, we are talking about. Most of the time, it's it's about how are you going to protect yourself? Okay. Or how are you going to protect the unforeseen? So mm. you can plan towards, you know, those life occurrences. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much. So I'm, I'm sitting here wondering, if somebody came to the mission house and I give them food and they have running stomach, can they sue me? As as uh, what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> so if if somebody comes to the mission house and you give them food and they fall sick, mm -hmm. is, yeah. is that a question? Yes. Yeah, unfortunately. That. So I mean, you realize that you know. I I think in recent times, food people people are, are not so much into donating for like these uh, restaurant chains and things like that. Mm -hmm. Initially, they have food leftovers, they would donate them to maybe like a homeless the shelters. And things like that. But if somebody eats that food and falls sick as a result of the food you gave them, mm -hmm. you, you, you do owe them, you know, a standard mm -hmm. or a duty of care which you have breached. Now, the, the, to escape that liability, it mm -hmm. would depend on your actions and whether you took the necessary steps to prevent that harm. Okay. All right. Because we are not God. We cannot prevent everything. Mm -hmm. So maybe the person is allergic to shrimp and mm -hmm. you told them ahead of time that, oh, this soup contains shrimp. Mm -hmm. And then they still went ahead to eat it. Mm -hmm. Then they took that uh, responsibility <laughs> upon themselves and you you will be vindicated. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Mrs. Spanish says she, uh, if you can join us. So I'll thank you so much, Gloria Grace, for those, you know, dimensions, very interesting things that we are looking at. You talked about murder, you know, the Bible in Numbers 35, 22 to 25, New Living Trust said, but suppose someone pushes another person 
without having shown previous hostility or throw something that unintentionally hits another person or accidentally drops a huge stone on someone though they were not enemies and the person dies if this should happen the community must follow these regulations in making a judgment between the slayer and the avenger the victim's nearest relative 25 says the community must protect the slayer from the avenger and must escort the slayer back to live in the city of refuge to which he fled there must remain uh, there he must remain until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the sacred oil so you know from what oh. lawyer grace was saying if you can come out in and wait from the criminal dimension she said look somebody could murder somebody what do you want us to do as a police officer who is always responding you know to emergent situations when there's an accident what do you expect from us as civilians yeah um thank you for the question so um in a accident let's start from a vehicle accident sorry pardon me for the background noise mm -hmm. citizens I'm, I'm earning my money today they, they are falling <laughs> left and right I mean, they know they are right and they are taking advantage of it so uh, sorry um so um let's start from the street if you're on the road mm -hmm. the problem is we understand a lot of people and uh, for the sake of social media, we know our documents. And when I say that, I know we all understand mm -hmm, mm -hmm. are not in order. Mm -hmm. So such people, and I know those who, when we drive, we use both hands and we, we can detect those things from where we are, where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, when we get involved in an accident, we try to leave the scene because we are scared of what's going to happen. Mm. If the police officer comes there and, uh, you know, the questions that they're going to ask. There are laws that were passed, let's say, four years ago. They were effective. But when they change president, those laws, we are not enforcing it as it used to. And that mm. even depends on each state. So I can speak for all states. But for Oklahoma, we are not enforcing that law. Mm. Where officers, when we get on scene, we inquire about your document or your, you know, immigration status. We don't do that. Mm. And a lot of people try to flee the scene because they don't want problems. Mm. Okay, the, the thing is, we swear an oath to protect and to serve. Mm -hmm. Priority is the person is your safety. Mm -hmm. Secondary is where you stand. And even that, it doesn't come in. So when you get involved in an accident, we've all understood that is unplanned. Mm -hmm. When that happens, please stay on scene. Mm. Because when you leave, People have the intention that whoever stays and waits for the police officer is innocent. Mm. That is far from the truth. Mm. A lot of people stay on scene so they can turn it around and put it on you. Mm -hmm. Once they have the tag number, that's enough for us to track you down. Okay. And we have a lot of hit and run. So even if you are at fault, whether you are at fault or you're not, please stay on scene. Mm. And all we need is your um, driver's license and your insurance. Okay. If you don't have a driver's license, and uh, and I will say this in peace. So who could be in Kata and I would need driver's license, I would need drive here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Please, the safest way to go about that is if you don't have your driver's license, drive with your if you have access to Ghana driver's license mm -hmm. and your passport, that is legal. It is accepted mm -hmm. everywhere. Okay. If you want to drive, drive with your license and your valid uh, um, passport, if it's not expired, it's legal. Mm -hmm. All that we want to know is something to identify you by. Because okay. a lot of people, for, for sake of not getting in trouble, so please stay on scene, wait for us to get there, mm -hmm. and then we can work the accident. In case of bad weather, usually we tell people that when the weather is bad, it's not worth staying there to get hit by another car. Okay. So when that happens, just, you know, please move on, exchange information. And if you think that the other person is hesitant in giving you their information, then wait, wait for us to sh I mean, show up on scene. Mm -hmm. And then we can verify to make sure the person's driver's license is valid. And then the insurance is valid. And we can exchange that information for you. Mm -hmm. and another thing that I will add is there are times that it's even safer for us not to work the accident. Mm -hmm. I say that because when we work it, it goes on your record. Mm -hmm. And that affects your insurance. When you want to mm -hmm. get insurance, the rate just shoots up. Mm -hmm. So for the most part, sometimes it's even best when you exchange information with the person on scene. But okay. because we know that, that where we are now, truth is very rare these mm -hmm. days. People will lie for even the least thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I understand that's why some people just want to wait for the police. If you suspect your instinct tells you this person 
is not giving you any information, then you can absolutely wait. Uh, when we move on to another accident with homicide, as um, the uh, lawyer was um, telling us, when accidental shooting, if you have a gun, you own a gun and you get shot on accident, or maybe you're cleaning it and you're not aware and you accidentally pull the trigger, mm. give us a call right away, treat it like an accident. Okay. And this is how we see it. When accident happen, normally and naturally, you know, you, you, okay. you, you react, you want to call, you want to do something. The moment you wait and you start thinking, then we think that you have a motive because at that time you're waiting, you're going to think over it, mm. start planning how to cover up. And then, so the longer you wait, the, the more, the lesser it becomes an accident. From that okay. point, it's starting to change from accident to intentional, mm. even though initially it was an accident, but human nature, there is gun involved. I don't want the police to get involved. When we come, our main aim is to protect and to serve. Okay. And we just want to make sure you're okay. What happened? And then we take the necessary steps to, to you know, render the scene safe. And then we mm -hmm. take everything else from there. So with a, with a legal point of view, when the thing is an accident, please let's try as much as possible to treat it like an accident and mm -hmm. not overthink it. The mm -hmm. longer you think about call people, hundreds of people, 50 getting everybody's opinion and then it then turns out to be intentional because now mm. you plan on how to hide it unconsciously mm. and once we show up we start asking questions like how long did it happen what did you do and when we suspect that oh i mean you took too much time to treat it like an accident then things take a different turn mm. and uh, that's mm. what i would um, yeah. add Great, great, great information to know. Thank you so much. Momo Doris, if you can weigh in, we want to start to look at, you know, what should we do? Like she said, that's the, the note that, you know, Sergeant uh, Fanny uh, said she ended with us on. The planning, accidents have happened. We, we started and our mother said, look, accidents are not all the time preventable. In some cases they are preventable, but it's happened to me. What should I do? So let's discuss implications and consequences. More doors, please. Okay, so before I, I take that one, I want to emphasize on the point that we are not accidents. All right. God really created us. And if you read Isaiah 42, 4, 4, verse 2a, Isaiah 4, 4, 2a, it says, from the Message Bible, I am your creator. You were in my care even before you were born. Awesome. So no one is an accident. Mm -hmm. You are not a mistake. You are not a mess up. You are here for a purpose. Somebody says something, and I want to quote, then I'll take my question. It said, okay. long before you were conceived by your parents, mm. you were conceived in my mind, in the mind of God. Mm. He of you first he is not it is not fate nor chance nor luck nor coincidence mm. that you are breathing at this very moment you are alive because god wanted you to be alive mm. hallelujah Amen. so God, we can be accident for our parents, mm -hmm. but <laughs> we are not accident. <laughs> for God. <laughs> yes, we can be accident for our parents. Maybe you didn't plan to have that child, and all of a sudden you see that you are pregnant. So we call them accident babies. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. for them, for them, mm -hmm. we are accident. But for God, we are Amen. not accident. Amen. God wants us. Yeah, God wants us to come. And God needs somebody like me, unique as I am, to be here to nurture my sis Kate with my husband. Mm. God knows all the things that I see me that will help to bring that thing that he has taught. So God sat down and created somebody like me. There won't be anybody like me, even if we are twins, that we can't be the same. Mm -hmm. So don't let anybody let you feel frustrated because... The person thinks you are an accident, you are troublesome. You are not. Troublesome and accident. That's a bad combination. Because, because so you said one, Psalm 139, verse 16. You say, you saw me before I was born. Yeah. And schedule a day of my life. Hmm. Before I began to breathe. Hmm. Every day 
was a record in your book. Hallelujah. So every day of your life is a record. God has written everything about you. So if you want a source, go to him. He's the creator. He created you. He knows if many things are difficult, go to him. He has the master key to your life and he will control it. Amen. This is just Amen. by the way. This is <laughs> so my question was that what should we do? Yes, we are now looking at implications and consequences. Whether it's preventable, whether it's not preventable, it's happened. What should we do? We have to move on. Mm -hmm. Once it happens, once you have life, you have everything. Mm -hmm. You know, bad things happen to good people. Yes. Evil things can happen to you. Mm -hmm. It has happened. What should you do? You shouldn't die. Mm. You shouldn't commit suicide. Mm. You shouldn't let your lock yourself down and cry and cry and cry and cry as if the crying will bring back whatever thing that you've lost. It's mm. good to mourn. After mourning for some time, hey, get up mm. and move on with your life. Mm. Seek counseling. Talk to the right people. Go to places where you, you can receive help. The first place is in the Bible. Mm. I remember something so awful happened when we went for missions. I Today, when I was preparing this message, it came and I was so down. There mm. was this of mommy who has been looking for the fruit of the womb for a long time. So when we went, she told us that this is her problem mm. and that, uh, that she needs a baby. Mm. So we prayed. For this one, we prayed and mm. God heard us. Mm, yeah. we, even, we brought her to Ghana for correct medical checkup at the Pentecost Hospital, and they said everything was okay. Mm. There was this other of mommy who had given birth to two children, not twins, the first one and the second one, mm. and she was looking for a third one. Mm. So we, we prayed for all of them, and they all got pregnant around the same time. Mm. When we, we, we moved from Ghana, we went back to our station, um, I think six months into the pregnancy and eight months for the first one who has two kids. One day, they visited me at the National Mission House with some herbs. Mm. And they told me that when they sit, they are less get swollen, so they are going to cook that herb. And they hear it is tatashi, so mm. it will let their... That this, I said, no, oh, no, this is this normal. It is normal for every pregnant woman to have that. It is after you've given birth and it's still swollen, that is an issue. I did everything to prevent these two ladies. In, in front of me, they said, okay, mama, we will not take their drug. We will not take the medicine. I should have taken it out of their hands, but I left them. But in the night when I was praying, I felt... I felt that, no, these girls were going to drink their mess. So I called the pastor and I told the pastor that he should go and monitor the wife. Lo and behold, when he went, the sophomore didn't go to her station, went to that sophomore who is expecting their baby's home. They cooked the medicine and they drank it. Hmm. Powerful as it was, immediately the sophomore took it. She went into labor. Hmm. Oh. She went into labor and six months baby and that place, no incubators, nothing. Mm -hmm. And they gave her forced labor. And that day was hell. Mm -hmm. We cried. Mm -hmm. we, 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 and the husband cried like a baby. Mm -hmm. Then a week after, after we had buried the first baby, the soft seconds of mommy, not knowing she was even pregnant with twins. She oh. also went into labor when she got into the uh, uh, hmm, hospital Jesus. the first baby the first baby came out and they rushed her to the uh, capital and that from that place to the capital was just too far so she mm. gave birth there was no oxygen so we lost three babies mm. so just imagine i was so devastated i cried me, I'm crying. The soft mommy, the two soft mommies are crying. Their husbands are crying. <laughs> so mm. after crying for some time, my husband said, so how long are you going to cry? Mm -hmm. you, you get up, you are the mother. You see, I had to go and talk to the pastor. It was a big blow. And it nearly ended in divorce. Mm. So we had to sit the pastor down and talk to him about it. What am, am I driving at? Issues do happen. Mm. 
uh, yes, they could have prevented it, but they didn't. Mm. It has happened. What should we do? Mm. We should forget about the past and think of the present, because that's what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Then we have to put in the correct measures so that we will not go back and do the same mistake again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do certain things, it will cause the accident. We are spoken to, we are talked to, we are instructed. We don't take the instructions. Mm -hmm. But if we really want to correct the mistake or the accident, we should adhere to instructions and or advice. Mm -hmm. Like a mommy, Janet talked about the um, divorce thing. Mm -hmm. they, if the divorce, you, before somebody goes through a divorce, there may be red flags that maybe people sit you down, they talk to you. When you go back, work on it. Work on it. Don't insist on your right and say that's for me. I am doing the right thing. The, the other person is the one not doing the right thing, and you don't want to change. Mm. We should we should be able to change from. Whatever thing that we do that is wrong, that is bringing the accident. And when we do that, we wouldn't go back. If you know that your schedule, you work on the night schedule, and you come home late, you come home early in the morning, you should get some sleep before you get back to work. Because if you don't take time, you keep on going on night, it will affect your health. Mm. If you are drinking coffee and the coffee is not good for you, stop. If you are taking too much sugar and it is not good for you, and the doctors are telling you, don't say that I'm a Christian. I, with God, I can do all things through Christ who strength. <laughs> this thing that you are doing in there, it is not strengthening you. It is weakening you. <laughs> so you see, we have to be realistic and do the right thing at the right time. If you do the right thing, go to help us. But sometimes we don't want to do the right thing. Then we push everything to or, or on Satan and say upon some. I remember Pastor Walla. He says, Ah, if I were to be Satan, I would have resigned. Because mm -hmm. some of the things I don't even do them and they put it on me. <laughs> <laughs> we, are advising, we are advising Satan to resign. So that <laughs> nobody will put anything on him. But all that I want to say is that sometimes we don't adhere to instructions. Mm. Sometimes, too, we don't want to go and uh, follow uh, things. And, and, uh, 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 and, and if it is like we should go this way, we don't want to follow, we want to jump. I remember as a friend lost the, the child. Mm. Hmm. I didn't know that uh, this uh, baby food that we give to children could cause harm to children. Mm. I didn't know. Mm. And so sometimes we will say that yeah, person, and then I take, take. So mm -hmm. we we'll put more, <laughs> we we'll put more formula and less water, mm -hmm. and the baby started taking it. The baby had complications, and eventually the baby died. Mm. So follow the instructions of food, even the food. When you buy rice, they say take this one and put this one. Simple instructions mm. can save us from accidents. I pray that when we do these things and we change our ways, even always God tells us, change your ways and we change our wrongdoings mm. and we do the right thing. I think that we can avoid most of the accidents that happen to us. May God help us all. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. First thing, Henrietta, if you can also weigh in. Mama Doris, thank you so much. We're looking at the implications, consequences. Mama Doris said, look, we have to move on. You know, somebody said, why cry over spilt milk? But yes, the tears are still flowing. First lady, Henrietta, if you want to weigh in as well. Yes, just to piggyback on what our mother said, um, I think it's important for us to understand that, you know, in the vocabulary of God, there are no mistakes or accidents because mm -hmm. God knows what he's doing. Um, in human mind, accidents, that's in our vocabulary. You use the situation like what happened in Job, um, what mm -hmm. happened to Job. Mm -hmm. um, God knew before it happened. But in human eyesight, you would think, oh, his family had an accident. His family, this happened is an unfortunate event mm -hmm. and et cetera. But we as believers have to know and have to sit back and, and analyze certain situations. Certain things come in our way for a reason. Mm -hmm. And when we take the time, which we, we a lot of times we don't because we kind of dwell so much in the situation, in the sorrow. We don't take time to actually take things out of it. Mm 
Hmm. Um, when we take the time to really understand what has happened okay. and we okay. ourselves try to figure out what is it, what maybe it's something God is trying to tell me. What is God trying to tell me in this situation? Hmm. How is God trying hmm. to speak to me in this situation? When hmm. we look at scripture, the Bible helps us understand that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our, our ways. So the way God does his, his things, we may not necessarily do it that way, but he's doing it for a reason. What is it? So I think it's important for us as believers to understand that there are lessons to be learned in life. Hmm. There are lessons to be learned in experiences and there's lessons to be learned in situations. We have to take our time to sit down and evaluate. It's hard for us to do it because sometimes or most of the time when we talk about accidents, they're sorrowful, they're hurtful, they're painful. Yes. Uh-huh. So we dwell so much on the pain hmm. and, and how much sorrow we're facing that we don't take the time to learn something out of it. Mm-hmm. I use example, like when my, my mother passed away, I, some people could have taken that as an opportunity to just cry and just be so sorrowful and be so hurt and be so, which we were, but mm-hmm. I felt like there was something God was trying to, to tell me. There's something mm-hmm. that God is trying to push me to do. And there's mm-hmm. something that there's a, there's a shell that God is trying to get me out of. Mm-hmm. And when I took the time to pray about it and get something out, of, I realized that even though, yes, her time on earth was up, there was something that God had something to tell me about. And mm-hmm. I think as believers, it's important for us to take those moments to ourselves mm-hmm. and ask ourselves, what is it that I need to get out of this situation be it heartbreak maybe you have been heartbroken what is it that you need to take out of that situation maybe you've gone through a, 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 a you know a hard situation an accident whatever it may be what do you need to take out of that situation some people like let's say for example maybe you did have a car accident maybe you did fall asleep maybe you know god is trying to tell you slow down you, and you never know, but we have to take our time to understand what am I supposed to get out of that situation? And what is God trying to tell me? And when we do that, then we're able to make the necessary steps and take the necessary steps to move on mm-hmm. because we do, we can't stay in our sorrow. We can't stay in our sadness forever because that leads to depression and that yeah. leads to so many other things, but we have to get out of that situation, get whatever God is trying to tell us from that situation and move forward accordingly and make sure that we don't fall into that same situation in the future god bless you so much god bless you so much what is god trying to tell me and you know i was looking at the book of job that you brought job chapter one the bible even says look this man was blameless and then you look at the sequence of events one thing leading to the other like in one day you know somebody says do you want the good first or the bad but for job it was one bad 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 and he said what is god trying to tell us in such a situation mama debbie i'm gonna come to you you shared you know your particular situation very unfortunate yet you had to deal with the realities of it so if somebody is in a similar situation implications and how do they move on everybody says you have to move on somebody says i want to move on but i feel stuck how should that person physically you're dealing with the pains you know you're dealing with the realities how are you able to cope how can that help somebody else more debbie thank you so very much for for mine actually what ended up happening is that um i think the doctors told my husband look at this we had just come into ministry and they told him my heart was swollen, so I wouldn't live more than six years. Mm. And he didn't tell me. Because if he did, I would have died before that six mm. years. Honestly. Mm. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I, I know my friends, I know who I am. And mm. I would have, you know. So he didn't tell me, but with prayers and you know, with encouragement. And then I had a new baby. And and, and the amazing thing that happened for me, maybe that is where the recovery came in for me. Because whilst I was in the hospital, I had a dream. Mm. And then in this dream, I saw a friend who had come to me that let's go for a walk. So we were going for the walk and then something told me, turn around and look at this friend. Mm. When I turned, it wasn't the friend, it was death. Mm. A lot of people said they had near death experience, it was death. And this thing started coming towards me and I started running. Mm. And I saw a huge rock. Mm. The rock covered me up. Mm. While at that same time, yeah, my husband was saying that he was in the room at home when the hospital bed came in and I said I couldn't stay because the pain was too much. Mm. And he said, then who is going to take care of the baby? Mm. And I said, I can't. Then he saw the bed going up and he held onto it and he said, God, if you let my wife die, I'm coming into ministry. That is the end of it. 
But God in his mercy, you see, sometimes it's just the grace of God. And I have been yeah. learning so many things. I want yeah. to encourage everybody that it is just the grace of Amen. God. Amen. God never, I mean, how do you know how many days God has planned for you? Mm -hmm. Right now, we woke up this morning, and this morning is what we have today. Even sometimes in the evening, you don't even have it. Yeah. So let us live our life to appreciate mm. that God loves us, and he has given us just a little time. When we are dealing with family members, maybe somebody who has lost, you know, loved one. Uh, if, 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 if you have a family member, deal with them as if they are gold. Mm. I'm telling you, because mm. we, don't, we don't have tomorrow. Mm. We don't know for sure that we have tomorrow, that tomorrow I'm going to plan this tomorrow. Who said mm. that tomorrow is going to be for you? So mm -hmm. if we deal with them as such, and then anything that happens, you know with your heart being at peace that, oh, I love this person like it was my last. Mm. You know, so in case anything happens, you know you did your part. Mm. Mm. And mm. accidents will happen, like our moms have said. Mm -hmm. If an accident happens, you've lost a child, maybe through an accident, uh, you, you may blame yourself for so many things. But at the end of the day, like our mommy said, it was in God's hands. Mm -hmm. That the hand of the Lord is in it. It yeah. passed before him mm. and he said, okay. Mm. Mm. You know, so for that time for us to go through the grief and then after the grief to be able to allow God to heal us, the spirit to heal us and comfort us. Mm. That is where we'll be able to move forward. When we are not able to do that, before you know it, there are other children who are also counting on you. Mm. But before you know it, you give up. Mm. You know, give up. Wow. And it means the task and the assignment you were given, you have not been able to fulfill. So beloved, I mean, I'm saying it and it's not as easy as, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we should appreciate each day that each day is just a gift. Mm. Uh, it is not something that I'm ordained to live for years. I mean, God said it will satisfy our mouth with good things and stuff, but maybe my time is up. Yeah. If my time is up, I should really appreciate it. And let the people around me to know that I love them. Mm. They are precious to me. Uh -huh. So that when that happens, you can be able to, you know, say that, oh, I did my part. God, I'm grateful. And mm. there will be many, mm. many regrets that shouldn't be. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. God bless you so much. I want to acknowledge our people. Thank you so much for that outlook. You are with us on today's woman. Share our link and let it be a blessing. We are talking about accidents from greater perspectives. It's, it's been such a learning moment here. And I have so many comments here. Uh, you know, it says, um, my husband says, Mama Abby, you are so right. This Big Bang stuff is just, I don't know. I'm glad I'm hanging on to faith. I like what the Bible said. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God shows us in Genesis how he made us. And it sounds more pleasant than the monkey, you know, that kind of. I look at, I go to the zoo, I look at the monkey, I say, why would I want to think I came from that? No, I like that. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, you know, notion of it. God bless you so much, dear husband. And also I see Reverend Benjamin could see and first lady could see, please hold oh, that. Pregnancy is just unplanned and unintended. Actions bring forth results for sure. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> reacting and i see i see jimama watkins so prwc she's here she says <laughs> and my dear son yes ma'am i agree with you and auntie donako she a lawyer grace this is good i owe my neighbor to be on the road or wherever a level of care i like law she <laughs> says so she does and my dear son says wow why is the law so complex? Thank God for Christ who mitigated its effects biblically. Thank, thanks for the insight. This is great. So we pray for the grace to comply or obey. Absolutely. H, no more mission house. <laughs> I <need> to... <laughs> <laughs> I have a disclaimer. <laughs> Before I serve you, I say, know that you can't sue me. <laughs> we may have to create a sheet for people to sign. <laughs> and then, oh my goodness. And I tell the doctor, say, oh, mama, give to you. Midget, I will sue you. <laughs> 
<laughs> if he just went top out for that question. <laughs> oh my goodness. And uh, everyone will sign a disclaimer. If I say it's a papa, no worries. Yes, so everybody will sign a disclaimer. Auntie Doris, <laughs> Mama Doris, so she had no more food from the Michelle household. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie, now that goes to you, she said, Rev, I can imagine, I think we will come up with a disclaimer for that too. This food you are about to eat from Mission House is prepared with heavenly intentions, which by no means intend up for <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, hey, he says, wow, great Instagram. He says, Uncle Isaac Lobby is here. He says, wow, great information. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Auntie Francesca, Uncle, she said, quality education and information sergeant. And she says, oh, Mama, I could to my Papa V. It's been wonderful here. I'm loving it. Auntie Monica, will see you are right, Mama. No one is an accident. So she's loving that. And then Auntie Nanako, she says, I'm, I'm men. Mama Doris, we have all of you who are here. Kindly share a link and let it be a blessing. Uh, thank you so much. I see Reverend Samuel Kumsen is on here. Love to firstly Joyce Kumsen. Nina is a professor. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate all of you who are on here. And for those of you who are on the we don't see, thank you. Auntie Katrin Mensa is here. God bless you. Auntie Lucinda Juman, God bless you for being here. Auntie Amadonelli is here. God bless you all. Thank you all. We appreciate it. Please share our link and let it be a blessing for somebody else. So, Mama Abigail, I'm going to go to Mama Araba Akins and then I'll come to you because we are looking at the marriage, the vows, because we are saying it's unintended. And uh, Dr. Araba Akins has started to open up, you know, on that dimension. Um, I want you to walk us through. You know, you, you, we talked off camera and you talked to me about the accident of divorce from your perspective. And we are asking, how do we move on, especially with societal expectations, especially if you are a church leader? In your case, you're a deaconess. If you could walk us through the trauma, because we are saying, look, accidents have pain and, and traumatic things they bring on board. If you could walk us through your journey so that lessons we can learn. And Mama Rigo, you can react to that. Dr. It's a long journey. Mm. Uh, one, I wasn't a member of the Church of Pentecost when this happened. Okay. Uh, number two, in my city then, the Church of Pentecost has not even arrived. Okay. Okay. And I wasn't a Pentecost member at home. I'm a Methodist. Uh, all I knew was the scripture union throughout school. So when this happened and i love so much that has gone on here the only person who makes the determination to move forward is you mm. you make the determination to make forward and i don't think i had looked for god as intensely as that Mm. Because at my age, when you're married, you are, your parents tell you, you don't share things in your marriage with people. Mm. And I'm in a foreign land. My neighbors are either Japanese, Spanish, or Americans. Who am I going to share this with? Yes. I don't work with any Ghanaian. <laughs> so who am I going to share this with? Mm. I don't mm. want to call my parents, book a TNT call, that at that time, a week, two weeks before you get a call mm. and break their heart, all they know is I wasn't writing mm. for years. Then I was beginning to forget my identity. Mm. You know, I, 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 I would dream that I'm very old by myself and mm. nobody near me. That scared mm. me. I'm the oldest child of seven. Mm close-knit family. How am I going to die? And nobody hears it. Mm. So I had hosted a Ghanaian lady who was then in the women's aglo mm -hmm. at home. She exactly. had taken me to a Pentecost church, a white Pentecost church in that visit. So I started mm. going there in the midst of this and that created another scene altogether. Mm. It was tough. Mm. So I'm beginning to even hate when I came to America with a PhD. I, I hated when people say, 
college, the mention of college is like a problem mm. in my life at that time. Mm. Then one day I dreamt another dream that I had that I should go back in steps physically. So I saved money and I did my graduate course in England. And I traveled to England three weeks mm -hmm. just to go to even the lab. I did my research in the schools, the, some of my professors. And I'm, I am beginning to recover, to remember who I was. Because mm -hmm. when I came to this country, I came to join a husband in school. Mm -hmm. And then we moved around the, you know, the U.S. and case came along. I hadn't started working then. then I'm home. And then this happened. Now I've got to call home and tell them it's not going to work. Mm. Within two weeks, my father was in this country, mm. but it was too much at that. What he saw is like, why didn't you tell us to send you a ticket and just come home? I said, this is my, my, my issue. I've got children with me. I'm going to have to brave this out. Mm. And one Sunday, I went to the evangelistic temple. That was the Pentecost exposure that I had. Mm. And Isaiah chapter 54 was preached. Mm. Of course, you, you must understand if you are then a Methodist, you, the, you, you know of Bible stories. Mm -hmm. But the way the preacher broke down the chapters, mm. it became something that I ate in the morning, mm -hmm. I mm. ate in the afternoon, mm. I ate in the evening, mm. particularly Isaiah 54, verse five, for mm. your maker yes. is your husband, husband, the Lord of hosts is yes. his name, yes. and your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel, yes. is called the God of the whole earth. I mean, I know yes. when you hear it, it comes after talking about widows. Mm. But immediately after that, God is wise. Wisdom mm. is God, period. Mm. Immediately after what this says, for the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Mm. That mm. just was me. Mm. I said, this God mm. knows everything. Apparently, I didn't surprise him. <laughs> I'm surprised. He's not surprised. Mm -hmm. uh, why are you beating yourself so hard? Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do with this? I said, I'm going back to school. I went back to school, two jobs, two kids, 13, nine in America, mm -hmm. and completed the entire public health course. I had never had mm -hmm. such joy in my heart. Mm -hmm. So when my kids, we grew, I, they grew up in the, that white uh, Pentecost Church, they have a better understanding of how to deal with things like this. Mm. I mean, the pastors and the wife will pick the case up for summer mm. so I can study. Mm. And I, I took myself out of my college friends that were here from Ghana. I went to KNUST. Mm -hmm. So there are a few of us, the oil city uh, of the US, a few of us there, I dissociated myself. I said, this is a you and God business. Mm. All they know is I'm no more in the house. They don't know where to find me. Mm. I don't fellowship with them. I go to this white church that understands me and supported me. Mm. Till I finished my public health degree. And before I was done, I got a job. Mm. I've never Very held a job. Very I've very never very held a job. Mm in the US, the same job for 30 years, mm. from grace to grace. Mm. Because like um, I said, I had a different understanding of how much knowledge God had of me. Mm. Mm. And I don't want to say it's a pleasant thing, it's not. Mm -hmm because I had never seen my parent dislike a person the way this resulted in. Mm. In their old age, they toned down a lot. Mm. But prior to that, 
it was a difficult thing for them. Mm -hmm. I had gone to over it. I, I couldn't even be hurt by hearing a news about my ex-husband, but my parents couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. And that disturbed me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my children became hardened, you know? It's like they were protecting me instead of me protecting them. Mm -hmm. Mm. But mm. the word of God is clear. God takes care of people like me mm. who were rejected, mm. whether they is because they listened, they didn't listen, they planned. Mm. I didn't plan this. I didn't plan this. <laughs> I, I didn't even plan to come to America, period. Mm. England was enough for me. Mm. I had a job at tech and I, I just said, well, you have a 29 years old, you could go, you could. But if God had shown me a glimpse of this, mm -hmm. believe you me, I wouldn't have come. Mm -hmm. it didn't, it, mm -hmm. I know I wouldn't have come mm -hmm. because America didn't attract me that much mm -hmm. at all. And so sometimes my heart breaks when I see somebody in the church going through things like this and you don't know how to. I do. If I get the chance, I would know how to deal with some of these. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't hear about it. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, there are people still sitting through this. And before we know, we didn't handle it. We didn't get to know. We didn't share experiences with them. And the marriage is over. See, mm -hmm. in, in, in this land, the US, UK abroad before somebody shares their private matter with you you know the, it has eaten them mm -hmm. it's not like at home where maybe a month your parents haven't said they, they would want to know mm -hmm. or, or you would you would have a sibling that or the church will step in somehow I don't know our culture itself has something to do with that how do you tell your child you're going to marry to be married you have issues don't tell anybody mm. so why would mm. i tell the pastor mm. your wife me i was a, a very obedient child mm. you say sit here i'm the child that will sit here and know the number of holes in the wall mm. i'm that kind i am not my curiosity was controlled by the cane period i don't <laughs> want to be touched anything like that so when this came along and I said, oh, well, it's far. I don't want to disturb them. I don't mm. want to scare them. Mm. I see. So this is, this is where I'm coming from. Mm. And, then, and then verse 13 says, all your children shall be taught by the Lord. By the Lord. Which shall be their peace. Mm. The Lord didn't forget the divorcee. Mm -hmm. He well, takes care of them as well. Mm -hmm. But that was my bread my kinky, my fried plantain. Mm. The word. Mm. The word. God bless you. Evangelistic temple. This, and from there, when my kids went to college, I said it was time for me to join the Ghanaian church. Mm. And that's when I joined COP. Mm. Mm. And it's already been did. 21 years already. Mm. We're glad you so, did. Wow. Uh, Dr. Che, uh, you might remember me. I was a member of the PUC board. Mm, mm, mm. I come to the Kokomimi PIWC when I'm in Ghana. Mm. Your face looks so familiar and I was trying that's, to remember where. That's where, yes. Yes, Reverend Chi, yes. You. Thank you. So that, that has been my, but it's possible to leave the scene, mm. but it's you. Mm. Nobody tells you. You don't share your plans with anybody anymore. Mm -hmm. If it's necessary to change friends, you do that mm -hmm. because it's about you and mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God in it, the grace will abound. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
Yeah. We thank God that you have a different, you know, experience to this is the point where we're about to end here. This is not a conversation that we can, you know, finish here. God willing, next week we'll take a break, celebrate the anniversary and come back to this because there are so many themes that have been, you know, pulled out just from what Dr. Araba AKC have said, you know, how to cope, how to deal with it, things to do. We thank God your story is different. Mama, we go if you want to react to what we just heard, please. Thank you, Aunt Janet. Thank you for being so open, mm, mm. bringing out issues that are on people's hearts mm, mm. that some are not able to share. Mm. But from everything that you have gone through and from what you have said, please write a book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sure I'm not the first one telling you this. Write mm -hmm. a book. Mm. You'll be blessing some hearts. Hmm. We'll be blessing some people who are going through similar experiences. Yes. And they will know that the God who took you through hmm. can also take them through. Yes, Thank sure. you so yeah. much for openly discussing this with hmm. I, 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 I want to say that my reaction to accident is to know when to choose my battle. Hmm. This is something I always tell my children. I know when to choose my battle. Some battles are not intentional. Some may be, but some are not necessary at all. So when it comes to issues like this, like Aunt Janet said, the only person who can save the situation is you. Mm. Even if uh -huh. other people come in to advise you, or people come in to empathize with you or whatever. Mm -hmm. You are the one who will take the decision for yourself. That's right. And right. you are the one who will put the action into place. Mm. So you are the only person who can work it out for the better. Okay. Of course, with the help of God. Mm. In situations like that, my personal advice is that, first of all, Sit down and assess the situation. Okay. Don't, don't, there's a tendency for you to immediately go, get angry, start blaming yourself. Even if people are not saying things to you, you sit down and you ask yourself, why me? Why are these things happening to me? Why has this, I'm sure Job asked himself, why me? Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's not even an accident. It's a deliberate thing, like in the life of Joseph. Mm -hmm. His brothers mm -hmm. deliberately told him. Mm -hmm. Mercy. To him, it was an accident because he didn't plan it. Mm -hmm. But they did it. And he fell into the trap that they had set for him. Yeah. And it descended upon him. But what did he do? He decided to remember the God in the daytime mm -hmm. during his night his night time yes the same god that has been there for me in the daytime mm. is the same god who is with Amen. me in the night time mm. if you have that at the back of your mind the darkness will not scare you mm. because the god of the day is the, the same the Hallelujah. same god of the night the night i love that mm. One verse that I love in the Bible is in Psalm 90, verse 12. Mm. All teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And the, the message one says, Oh, teach us to live well. Mm -hmm. Teach us to live wisely well. and well. Mm. Wisely and well. You see, when, when the, the, the issue happened to Joseph, if you go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 19, his brothers, after they had done all those things, <laughs> now they realize that mm, we are in hot waters because this boy's dream is coming true. Mm -hmm. We are bowing, we have already bowed to him and we are bowing to him and our father oh, is dead. And anything <laughs> can happen to us. Yes. So they fell down on their faces and they were saying, behold, we are now your servant. <laughs> but 
Yes, I love what Joseph right. said. Joseph chose his battles. He said, don't mm. be afraid. But, mm. well, am I in the place of God? Of God. Mm. As for you, you meant evil against me. Facts. But God meant it for good. Amen. In order to bring it about as it is this day, mm. to save many people alive. Jesus. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. Mm -hmm. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This is where we choose our battle. Mm -hmm. This is where we choose our battle. I heard the story of Joni, the quadriplegic yes, lady. Yeah. I heard it. I mean, I was in a conference when she came, physically saw her when she was telling her story. Mm -hmm. The accident that took place that left her in that state. Mm -hmm. But you know what she told, she said that really got my attention. She said, every morning I wake up, mm -hmm. I have to go through the routine mm -hmm. of the pain of dressing up, sitting up, mm -hmm. going on with life as usual, mm -hmm. and meeting the demands of the day every day in my life. Mm -hmm. but every morning, Every morning, I wake up and I deliberately bring myself up to that situation mm. and say, today is another day for me. I dress up, I get up, I go through the motions and then I do what is expected of me. Mm. You see, God in his own wisdom and in his own sovereignty can miraculously heal people. Yes. But sometimes he doesn't. Mm. Why he doesn't, we don't know. Can ask him, yeah. Mm. We can ask him, but <laughs> we whatever don't answer he gives us, we will have to go with it because mm -hmm. in his sovereignty, he does what is good for us. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to all these things, mm. you sit down, you assess the situation and you lay it before the Holy Spirit. Mm. If God in his sovereignty says, I'm taking you out of it, great. Mm -hmm. If he says, you go through it, great. Mm. Great because even if you are going through whatever, he is with you. Mm -hmm. He will work with you. He will not leave you. And you will not be facing the battle alone. Mm -hmm. I was really happy with what Auntie Janet said. She said, she got up and went back into the situation and then mm -hmm. realized that she had to move on. Mm -hmm. She didn't give up. That's right. She went on. And of course, the Lord was with her. Mm -hmm. And is still with her. Mm -hmm. And still carries her through. Mm -hmm. So let us choose our battles wisely with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In places where God says that, get up and defend the defenseless, let mm -hmm. us get up and do it. But in places where God says, go oh, and I'm walking through with you, mm. let us also take care of that one. Amen. I want to end with this Bible verse. Okay. Isaiah chapter 61. That's I open to that as vanished on my okay. Isaiah chapter 61. Chapter 61. You know how the the internet can fail you when you need it. Okay. Fifty one. Mm -hmm. And this is the same scripture that Jesus read mm -hmm. in this manifesto. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captive, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, mm. to give them beauty for others, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven, 
that they may be called trees of righteousness. Mm -hmm. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Amen. So all accidents, mm -hmm. no matter the level they have taken us to, mm -hmm. we have agreed that the accidents are unplanned mm -hmm. and they usually end in the, um, adverse situations. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that we are going through, whether somebody deliberately did it or not, mm -hmm. because you didn't plan for it yourself, it has come to you as an accident. Mm -hmm. But here is God telling us that he is there to give us beauty for us. Mm -hmm. He is there to give us the oil of joy for mourning mm -hmm. and to give us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. I didn't do a year, dear Fina. <laughs> what else do we want from God? <laughs> so whatever accidents have happened in our way, mm. they were meant for our destruction. Mm -hmm. But God will turn it around. Mm. So long as we trust in the Holy Spirit to lead us. To. A lot of people raise the issue. They also say, yeah, there be a Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. It may be passing in it here. Yes, your part is for you to sit down and listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. <laughs> and you see, sometimes when you have prayed and you have cried and you are desperate and you don't know what to do and you, you don't even feel the, 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 the Spirit telling you anything. You don't, mm -hmm. It's like God is not hearing you. That is where you go according to what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Do whatever you do out of love, like Mama Debbie said. Mm -hmm. If you don't get any conviction, any clear conviction, take a step in faith. Okay. Based on what you know of the love of God. Mm -hmm. And when you go in that direction, you will never be wrong because the God of the daytime, the God of the nighttime, says, you will not be. Amen. 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 Very, very beautifully said. I love what you said. For Joseph's siblings, it was planned. But for him as a recipient, there was some plans. Sometimes in our lives, things happen like that. It takes us by surprise. But some people plotted. They took time wanting to hit us and cause us pain. But Mama Vigo says, yes, we'll acknowledge that this is unplanned. But we do know in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And God will work it out for our good. Very powerful. God bless you so much. I see Auntie Beatrice Tetters on there. God bless you. Uh, Elder Nate Opokua Mo is here. God bless you for being here. We appreciate you. Auntie Mercy Dankwa, she says, that scripture is powerful. God bless you more, Janet, for sharing. Auntie Rejoice Essenam is here. She says, the entrance of God's word brings light. Amen. Auntie uh, Margaret Asen is here. God bless you so much. Auntie Grace Ardo is watching. God bless you. We appreciate all of you. I see big sis, uh, Auntie Maud Mensible, so first thing you hear, your sister is here. God bless you all. First thing Rosemary, your Jew is here. Thank you so much for being here with us. And all of you are on here. We do appreciate you. The, uh, Auntie Sandra so I see you also. This has been very great. It's a topic that definitely we're going to revisit because we just will not be able to exhaust us here. We're going to take our closing. God willing, next week we have an anniversary celebration and we'll come back to this topic again. Um, because I have a uh, sergeant here, sergeant will take your clothes because you're, you're duty working. Uh, so sergeant, uh, Fanny says she, if you can, uh, give us remarks that you want us to take away with us, uh, even as we're going. Okay. Oh, sorry. Park. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for, um, inviting me on today. God bless each and every one of you. God bless you all, our mothers. And um, the, the takeaway would be accident happened. Mm -hmm. And um, even as Christians, as we, we, we uh, our mothers have rightly said, God has given us the wisdom and the Holy Spirit as the Holy Spirit is our comforter to remind us. God also has also taught us by his word that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So mm -hmm. as we study the word of God, 
that is where we how we become wise to make uh, wise decisions so we shouldn't sit in the car and turn on a gospel song and be speeding hitting on this i mean the gas and hoping that oh holy spirit <laughs> Holy Spirit will blindfold the eyes oh of the God. police officer. Yes. I'm also a child of God. So if God blindfold my eyes, how am I going to see? So, you know, we are all children of God. Uh -huh. So we pray some prayers. Don't let the officer see me. We are also praying that God let us also catch the people. That are oh, my goodness. So speed it. Because we are also saving lives. You know, as it is, the only time is you, you see us when you commit a crime. And as uh, Paul said, our kind of mind is enmity against God and we don't want to obey the commandment of God. That is our kind of mind. We don't want to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. But as Christians, God also wants us to obey his commandments if we love him. So let's also show the same love that the laws in the country are put there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And we are put in place to enforce those laws. Mm -hmm. We are not your enemies. So please, we are here to serve and protect and um, we would love that if you need anything, please let us know mm -hmm. when that time comes. And we are willing to also be, be of help to people. There are bad nuts everywhere, but there are also good people that God has put in place. And as uh, Matthew said, blessed are the peacemakers, mm -hmm. for they shall be called the children of God. So mm -hmm. we do as much as possible to keep the peace. Mm -hmm. And um, when you, you are speeding and you get stopped, please do not lie. You are mm -hmm. caught. And, and that is the thing. When we fabricate lies, it makes the situation worse. Mm -hmm. And then now we have to cover one lie with the other. And that goes against our Christian, you know, our, our, how we were raised mm -hmm. and what we want to impact mm -hmm. onto our children. Because when we come and then we go to church and say, hey, we are here to give a testimony, but we know that we lied to the officer. <laughs> that is not a testimony. Let's, let's not do that. You know, let's not do that. So when you tell the truth and you are let go, that is a testimony. But when we lie, let's not, you know, put it that. Let's tell the truth and then God will. will Who's helping them? I'm sorry. <laughs> it seems like we are helping God. Exactly. 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 Mom, we, we, try to, we try to get ahead of God and help him and tell him God did it. But Yamin Smawa, please let's not let's mm. not do things and then put it on him. But we, we love you all and we all ask for prayers for my partners. Mm. The work that we do in a split second, somebody's life can be taken mm -hmm. just like that. So we mm -hmm. plead that you continue to pray for us mm -hmm. as God has put us in the position. People, we are that thin line between good and evil. Mm -hmm. There are certain situations that we see each day. Mm. It affects people. Mm. So we pray that and we plead that I'll use this opportunity to also ask for prayers mm -hmm. for myself and all our partners. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have any question, please do call us. Call any police department wherever you are. And then we will do well to answer all questions. So God bless you all for having me here. And Wonderful. I, I really <laughs> so I just funny says she God bless you so much. You know, when we are playing the gospel music, we will watch out. You know, somebody said the police officer stopped him. He was on his way to go and pick his wife from work, and the wife works in the hospital. So the officer said, Why are you supposed to my wife is in the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, of course, she is in the hospital, but not in the sense that the officer was thinking. So very interesting way that you told them. But we are praying for you. We appreciate all that you guys are doing. So I love to the family. God bless you and thank you for being here with us. And I see Auntie Anastina Taylor is laughing. My dear husband is laughing. So, oh, mercy, Auntie Fanny, you are making us feel guilty. Pa. <laughs> and I teach you myself for real, officer, you said it all. And I teach you the she said, oh, sad. <laughs> learned a lot today thank you all and as <laughs> and uncle isaac lobby wonderful session god bless you all god bless you too and auntie sandra also she says <laughs> well said sergeant and this is mrs Rodrigo brookman and jay god bless you officer so very interesting note lawyer grace who will take your closing as well <laughs> can i just tell sergeant that i love her uniform Oh, such is funny. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. So, Mrs. Grace and Sarah, we'll take also your closing as well. What you want us to take home, please. All right. Uh, it's been a great discussion. And uh, I want to thank 
all our mothers for uh, sharing their experiences and their thoughts with us. In closing, um, I would say that as much as life's within our power, mm -hmm. um, let's do the little things that we can okay. to prevent the preventable accidents that come our way. Mm -hmm. And from the legal perspective, that would be uh, the simple act of obeying the rules and regulations okay. that mm -hmm. have been put in place to, to regulate us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, in, 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 when, you, when you go to companies, companies hire compliance managers, risk management professionals, and their the, the duty really is simply to ensure that the company takes the steps mm -hmm. and the, the principles that they need to have in place to make sure that they're not found wanting and to prevent some of these uh, accidents that we have talked about. Mm -hmm. But as individuals, the best we can do is merely to uh, follow the rules that we have uh, wherever we may find ourselves and also to prepare ourselves and plan for, for unexpected events mm -hmm. like having a will in place, a mm -hmm. power of attorney or healthcare proxy just to make sure that in case anything happens, which we pray it does, nothing bad happens to us, of course. That's our prayer as Christians. But just, you know, in case anything happens, you know that um, the people you love are also catered for and mm. you have things, you, you have put things the way that you want it to be in, okay. in such eventualities. So uh, that would be it for me. Uh, thank you so much for having me and God bless us all. Thank you so much. God bless you. So let me ask this because uh, this is the second time I've heard having a will in place. So if I just write, maybe I sit down with my husband, I write, you know, give my all my hearts to miracle and give my car to profit. And we go to the bank and we have a notary public notarize it. Is that a will? Could you just because, you know, you said it, said it, said it so much. So if you could just briefly. Uh, explain to us what will make uh, something legal as a will, please, even as we are closing for somebody who wants to know. So, uh, all right. So for, for the U.S., if you're in the U.S., it all mm -hmm. depends on the state in which you, you reside because okay. different states have different rules. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the basic thing that runs through almost all the state is that for a will, it has to be in writing. Okay. So if you put it down in writing, that is enough you must have two witnesses okay uh, i think some states may say one some may say two but there must be a witness of some sort mm -hmm. who witness you signing okay. not writing the will you can write it and not sign till you have the witnesses present okay and then they will sign after you sign and that is just to make sure that uh it's not forged nobody mm -hmm. compelled you to sign it and that at the time that you signed it you were of sound mind and mm -hmm. knew what you were uh, appending your signature to. Yeah, so you must have um, uh, witnesses mm -hmm. and then you must have the notary as well. Okay. So if you have all those things in place, you know, that's a will. It's, it's enforceable in law. You don't need a specific type of writing, though. Mm -hmm. If you see a lawyer, they'll be able to, you know, uh, bring your attention to certain things, help you. Uh, remember your assets and certain eventualities that you may not have thought of if, mm. if you had to do it by yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but that qualifies as a will. So long as you have it in writing, your sound mind, you are 18 years and above, you have witnesses, and then you get it notarized. That satisfies the requirements of the law. Great. What if you are in Ghana? <laughs> right. In, in, in Ghana, I mean, the requirements are the same. <laughs> Yeah, in Ghana, you need witnesses as well. In Ghana, you need two witnesses mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, who need to sign in, in the presence of each other. So you can okay. have one witness sign and then go find the second witness. Mm. You need both of them to be present at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Does it mean that it doesn't have to go to court? Well, people, people deposit their wills in court, but it's not a requirement. Mm. Uh, you can keep it in a safe place. You can keep it with your lawyer. You can, the, the basic idea is when we need to have it, mm -hmm. we, you know, we, it has to be in a place where you can access it. Okay. Yeah, so it, it, doesn't, it doesn't serve any purpose if you have a will and then- Nobody can trace uh, it. In the case of- 
Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's I'm, the I'm, people that I'm people raising people. this issue of mommy grief uh, because um, you know that in the hospital sometimes you are uh, by somebody dying mm -hmm. and the person is in a sound mind and everything, the nurse can be the witness with another person mm -hmm. and um, then you put it together science and then you put it there anything happens but a lot of people don't know that mm. so they are in a bad situation they don't know that they can get somebody um, mm -hmm. to witness and then keep it although it hasn't gone to court so i'm glad that you have raised this issue and that we have all heard from the lawyer <laughs> Thank you. Lawyer Grace and sir. God bless you so much. The little one is calling your attention, so we will let you go. But we appreciate you and our love to Lawyer Chris. We miss him. Thank you and God bless you for being here. First Lady Henrietta. Yes, Swami. God bless you all. Um, this has been a very interesting topic, and I'm happy that we'll continue. Um, the only thing I just want to leave closing is that um as believers, let us continue to trust in God in every mm. situation mm. and understand that God knows what he's doing in our life. And though to us, it may appear as an accident or unplanned, we have to understand that God, it passes the desk of God before it happens. Right. To us. He right. And he knows what he's doing. And at times, things that happen to us that may come across as unplanned or bad things are the mm. same things that will direct us into the path that will be the best thing that will happen to us in our lives. Mm. So let us continue to lean on God and trust in God. And though you may endure weeping at this night, just mm. remember that joy does come in the morning. Mm. If we just yeah. continue to sit ourselves on our Lord and continue to lean on his spirit to lead us. So I just want to encourage everyone that any accident that you have experienced or may be experienced, and it's not the end of your story and it's not the end of your road, but God has a great big light ahead of you. Just continue to trust in him. So may God bless you all. Mm. Amen. God bless you. God bless you so much. God sees it. He hears it. He feels it. He knows it. And we are in safe hands. God bless you so much. First Lady Henrietta Christine. Mama Debbie, please would take your closing as well. Thank you so very much, Amman. I've been so blessed as usual. And um, like we were saying, accidents, most of the times are things that, you know, it is unplanned. It is something that you know, happens to us all of a sudden. And uh, some of it can be prevented, mm -hmm. some of it cannot be prevented. Yes. Uh, but like our moms have said, we know that we are in capable hands. Mm. His hands are more than capable to be able to hold us. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage anyone here who is going through some difficulties. Mm. They've had an accident, they are going through some difficulties or something has happened to a family member or even with this COVID times. Yes. And things that may have gone on. I want to encourage everybody. Like our moms have, have made us to know, he said, you know, um, uh, the decision rests on you. Mm -hmm. uh, to move forward, the decision rests on you. And, and may God give us the strength by the power of his spirit. Amen to move on because sometimes our mind goes in cycles yeah our mind is reflecting on the heads and the pain and all that mm -hmm. but may the holy spirit grant us the boldness and the strength so that we can say that you know we still have tomorrow we still have today and because we have today we want to live for today mm -hmm. to give him glory mm -hmm. and when we do and he strengthens us by his word we'll be able to move on to be able to accomplish anything that he wants us to accomplish. Mm -hmm. We should remember one thing, we are very much loved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Very much loved. His love for us cost him his life. Mm -hmm. So if his love for us cost him his life, how much more when we go to him, will he not do things so that at least our hearts will be at peace? May God help us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. We are very much loved. Doesn't matter whether we cost it ourselves. Doesn't matter whether, like mommy said, uh, some people plan it to bring it to us. Whatever it is, God loves us. And the Bible said it wasn't because we were worthy, but while we were yes in us. So thank you so much, Mama Debbie, for letting us know that we are very much loved. The accident, whether we caused it or not, will not change the fact that we are much loved. God bless you so much. More Doris, please, will take your closing. Oh, okay, thank you so much. In fact, I've enjoyed today's session. And I know it's going to help a lot of us. 
mm. very, very educative. So we thank God for this day. And I just want to close by saying that um, accidents are inevitable. Mm -hmm. We don't plan them. They, they may come if it has to come. So if you are around somebody who has gotten him or herself into an accident, please mm -hmm. know how you talk mm -hmm. or the comments that you make mm -hmm. can make or, or make the person. Because mm -hmm. already because of the accident, the person yep. is beating Broken. herself up. Mm. The person is not forgiving herself. Mm -hmm. the, self, the person is having self-pity. The person is depressed. And the person is, is, is finding it very difficult to bring him or herself up. Then you come and you pass a comment that will rather put the person down. Mm. I don't think it is good for us to do that. Yeah. For the Bible says in Galatians, to carry each other's burden, mm. and so you will fulfill the law of Christ. Mm. The Bible says we should carry each other's burden. So if a person is going through any difficulty, make sure you don't pass comments that will wound the person <laughs> the more. Even, more. even some, people, uh, some people even uh, attempt to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. If you are watching us and you are going through any difficulty, please don't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't do yourself any harm. That's because right. the Bible says in Isaiah, 40, Isaiah 45, verse 18, and it says, you formed the earth. You didn't create it to be empty, mm -hmm. but formed it to be inhabited. God formed this earth to be inhabited. If you kill yourself, who is going to inhabit the place that God has formed? You are needed. As my Debbie said, you are loved. So don't kill yourself. Hold on. Stay in there. We are here to help you. So many people are around. Talk to somebody who will help you. If it's a spiritual thing and you think that the, that spirit is oppressing you, seek help. Go to a man of God or a woman of God who will lead you into prayer. But don't kill yourself. Because if you kill yourself, then you are going straight to hell. And nobody should go to hell. That's he wants right. you in heaven. God mm. wants you. He wants you to inhabit the earth. That's mm. why he created it. Today may not be your time, mm -hmm. but tomorrow, I believe you, me, the sun will rise on you. May God bless us all. Mm. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much, Lord Doris. What you said is about the comments. I, I remember a scenario happening. Somebody supposedly who was going to call to stand with the person, even in the conversation, was trying to indicate that this happened because you must have said something. Like, you know, if no. you're calling, call in. If you're here to encourage the person, encourage them. But don't try to blame them for something they have no idea. So when the person was telling us, I said, look, don't listen to them. And I love Mama Debbie what you said. You were loved. And sometimes... We need to know those who love us. And when we need encouragers for those people to, you know, put us on that right path. I love Mama Akins, what you said. You said, I had begun to lose myself. I needed to go back. Sometimes you need to revisit who you are because some people maliciously will push you down, even when you are down. You know, somebody said, when the elephant is down, then other, even the ant, tries to buzz around him but thank god Mumadori, for what you said that we have to know what we say to people who are down thank you for uplifting and encouraging people in such situations mama abigail um my closing remark i found in um new king james version first mm. samuel chapter and verse Now David was greatly distressed, for the mm. people spoke of stoning him, mm. because the soul of all the people was free. every man for his son and his daughter. Mm. But David strengthened himself in the Lord. His mm. But David strengthened himself in the mm. Lord. I like what Mama Dory said about us carrying each other's burden. Mm. Please, don't leave your burden on others. <laughs> um, 
a lot of people we have the other side more group attitude <laughs> where um yes the person is in trouble the person needs help people come in to help and they refuse their help they always want to look um everybody to sympathize with them they throw a pity party mm. the pity party is not going for long mm-hmm. it is natural for it to be a problem at that time and when people come in to help to accept the help and everything we carry each other there mm. but the people will not be there forever mm. so be like david mm. and encourage yourself in the lord Mm. Because he's the only one who will never leave you. Know, That's right. So it's very, very important that we throw the pity party away and then continue. Mm-hmm. And when you continue yourself in your name, <laughs> you, <laughs> you will see you. <laughs> That's when right. You, when you encourage yourself in the Lord, in the Lord. Lord himself will mm. take care of you. Mm. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. Dr. Robert Akins, I'm about to come to you also. And then, mm-hmm. Mama Doris, please, you pray for us. But, Mommy, thank you so much for bringing it to attention. Last week, and you look at the previous two episodes, we talked about know yourself, know your strength, you know. And, and Mommy said, look, encourage yourself. Some things have happened. You know you are a good person. You know you didn't mean for this to happen. You sometimes, a lot of people hurt themselves because they are worried about what the other person would think of them. Exactly. You don't have to worry about them. You don't owe them anything. They may even, as you're pretending to sympathize, they are celebrating that this has happened to you. But once you know yourself, you are a child of God, you encourage yourself because he will carry you through. God bless you so much. Dr. Herbert Akins, please who will take your remarks. I will have you know that the views express our own personal views in no way, shape, or form. Would that be the collective view of the Church of Pentecost? Dr. Herbert Akins, mm-hmm. the whole thing. We want to thank God for this opportunity. I am so blessed. All that I've heard, I didn't know half of that. Mm-hmm. From the sergeants to the house of Miami, for, from Canada to Ghana. Oh, I miss home though. Uh, <laughs> come, come, come. <laughs> I've learned so much, so much. And if I have to add anything to this, last week you did the SWOT analysis mm-hmm. and it, it, it's aimed at, is it last week? Whatever. We took two weeks, uh, yes, to yes. deal with us. Okay, so uh, before you do a SWOT, you know you have a goal. That's right. And so you didn't accomplish the goal. Mm-hmm. And I use that skill in my analysis when this great, the greatest accident happened to me. Mm. I knew that one of my strengths is to learn. Mm. I love to go to school. Mm. I mean, I feel like if you put me in school versus job and you pay me for going to school, I will still will be in school. <laughs> so after I made my stroll through uh, the University of London and I said, oh, here was I. Here's a copy of my dissertation in mm. the library. Mm. Nothing could stop me anymore. Mm. Nothing mm. could stop me. And so the SWOT analysis was helpful. Mm. Mm. Another thing that encouraged me was that I knew it was now in my hands between me and God. Mm. Actually, I have a sesegua in front of my bed. Mm-hmm. I kneel on the bed. I look at the assessigua and I say, you are here, husband, let's talk. (laughs) That was me. Mm -hmm. I still have it today. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I go, my assessigua follows me. (laughs) So it's between you and me. And I'm reminded of another verse, Psalm 6, verse 5. Getting out of the problem. Remember, there is no praise for God in the grave. Mm. So don't wish to die ever, mm. whatever the problem is. He already has your times in his hands. Mm. You will not be here forever. Mm. So don't be in a hurry to go mm. because you made a mistake, mm. because you had an accident. Mm. You cannot grow without accidents happening mm. because mm. they are not deliberate. Yeah. They are not deliberate. God uses it to speak to some of us clearly 
Mm-hmm. Because he has words. <laughs> God uses us <laughs> to make us come closer. Mm-hmm. He uses us to affirm certain things. Mm-hmm. We cannot reject accidents. Mm-hmm. We have to embrace it and move forward mm-hmm. because we all will meet one day mm-hmm. in heaven. Amen. Can you imagine okay. what our stories will look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We thank God right. for today mm-hmm. and the days ahead. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Madam Agifti Ampofo. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. We cannot reject it. We can embrace it. We can learn from it. We can mature from it. And we can, through that, be a support and a strength for somebody else because your story is an encouragement. And every one of us here, with all that you've shared, it's been a great encouragement. Thank you so much, my mothers. First Lady Henrietta Kusi, God bless you so much. Mrs. Fanny says she's sergeant. Thank you so much. Lawyer Grace Ansa, we appreciate you. Thank you more. Debbie Enkman, God bless you so much. More Doris, Otunyako, God bless you. More Abigail, God bless you too. And we want to take a prayer. I uh, want to announce to a people, as I said, you know, when mommy would say, as I said, I wanted people to know it's a stool, like a sort of a traditional stool. For somebody who is wondering, what is that, as I said, uh, Mama Doris, before you pray, God willing, next week, TW is two years. Hooray! Mm-hmm. Somebody said, Are you just two years? Yes, yes. we are just two years. But God has been faithful. So, God willing, next week, mm-hmm. it's going to be anniversary celebration. All of you who have our TW gear, <clears throat> get it ready. Send us video. <clears throat> send us pictures you know we love to have you win we're gonna do a challenge send us a video 60 seconds telling us what you love about tw also you know let us know what you want to know from tw and let us share this and god willing next week we're gonna enter into a drawing and five people are gonna win from us and we want people to know that tw needs resources so if i have some people say look we want to sponsor tw i said oh wow we never thought about that so if it's touched your heart and you want us to advance we are open to that and if you are a digital person you're good with videos and you want to help us we also open to that next week is all celebration and we have a surprise for you we're gonna have a musician also join us if all goes well wow. so get ready we're gonna have fun it's fun time god willing next week our uh, momo doris please will take a prayer okay let us pray Our Father in heaven, we want to bless you so much that you loved us and even taught about us before we became clot of blood in the wombs of our parents. You have a definite plan for us and you orchestrated it and you allowed us to live to see this day. And so for this fact, we say we bless you and we thank you so much. We thank you that Lord, you are God. Beside you, there is no one. And there won't be any other person like you. You are supreme. You are the almighty. Indeed, you are the El Shaddai. We bless you, our father. We are so proud that you have us as your kids. Father, as we've discussed this evening, accidents are inevitable. But we believe in your mighty right hand that can sustain us. Let this right hand be upon each and every person who is watching now or who watch later that this hand will protect us if you are going through the shadow or any valley the lord is disturbing us we pray for your grace Mm. we pray for your sustenance we pray the lord you lift us from the valley and put us on the mountain to stay in the name of Jesus. Mm. If there are people contemplating suicide, we pray against that spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. For your word said that you created the earth so that we inhabit it. So nobody should die prematurely. We pray that Lord God, by your blood, you preserve us from this virus, Lord. You preserve and preserve us so that nobody will die out of Be our God, be our Lord, be our protector, be our provider, be Mm. our everything, Lord. Lord. We commit next week's program into your hand. We pray in the name of Jesus that even as we are two years, we will continue to give us more grace than Mm. Lord God Almighty. Through this channel, people will come to the saving knowledge of Christ 
and give their lives to God. Lord, even as we are living, we aren't living your presence, though yeah. we pray that your angels will be with us everywhere we go, so that when we come back next week, Monday, and we hear from Mama Gifty, then it's a way of saying thank you once again for your faithfulness. We thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. God bless you so much. We want to acknowledge all the service here and all the Today's Woman team. Our mothers, God bless you. Auntie Anita Johnson of Johnson Flavor, Elder Kobijenvi of Triangle Laundry Express, Digna Sarabafu of MTTA Fashions, Elder Chris Ansa, um, Elder Chris Coleman of Greensboro, North Carolina. These are the people that have partnered with us and always are part of the people who sponsor our challenges. Thank you, thank you. It's two years and you've been holding the fort and all of you, we appreciate it. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. Have a pleasant, pleasant rest of the week. And God willing, next week is going to be fanfare galore. Mothers, God bless you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.